Today's topic is called marriage and responsibility. Marriage and responsibility. All right. Because everything, this, this world frees us from responsibility. Yeah. Not being held accountable for our actions, a world to thrive is on irresponsibility. That's how abortions take place from irresponsible men and women. That's where it comes from. That's where a majority of those things stem from. Yes, there's small instances where there's rape. Yes, there's instances where there's molestation or incest. Yes, there are instances, but that's on a small percentile. Small percentage. <coughs> you you're gonna try to use the negative point of it, but they'll this they'll, they'll, they'll stray from the main reason behind the abortions, which comes from irresponsible hormongering men and women. All right. So we're we'll, we'll gonna open up with Ecclesiastes chapter six, verse seven, regarding marriage, because I'm hearing my brothers in here and sisters in here. We're getting, we get like Baba says, I see we're in your lives. When we, when we establish the complaint form, at first I said, Oh Lord, we shouldn't do that because it'll open the floodgates. We're gonna be answering complaints for the rest of our lives. <laughs> Two thousand complaints a month. But then I realized that if people see us get the complaint forms and they see us respond to the complaints, they're going to know we actually care about the, about the concerns and issues of the people. That will actually strengthen the trust between the leaders and the body. By hearing the complaints, entertaining the complaints, if, if they're worthy of entertaining, because some things are just emotional events, we ignore those. But some issues that, that have merit, and we go, okay, fine, we're going to deal with that. That strengthens the trust between the, the members, the congregation, and the leaders, whether it be the captains, the officers, the soldiers, the, the, the deacons, and so forth, the bishops, and so forth. So Ecclesiastes 6 and 7. And that gives us, once again, it goes back to that word, that gives us accountability, that gives us responsibilities. Ecclesiastes 6 and 7. The book of Sirach, chapter 6, verse 7. If thou wouldst get a friend, Prove him first. So the first thing we go over this all the time. Some of y'all like, oh, here we go again. I got to do it. It's like Israel catches temporary, te temporary mental disability when it comes to marriage, man. Like brothers act like, sisters act like they're just slow, like mentally dysfunctional when it comes to the topic of marriage. We go over this numerous times. And the reason why the marriage understanding has evolved so quickly and so much over time is because we'll go over the same matter over and over and over again. And so we all go over it again. So, read it again. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. So a friend, if you would get a friend, prove him or her first. Prove him or, I was in the masculine tone, because the men are the leaders. So it says, prove him or, in this case, also her first. Continue. And be not hasty to credit him. What is the credit? Meaning, you see the, he's handsome, She's pretty. He has a good job. She's smart. He's industrious as well. And you just go, yeah, based upon the looks and their job, that's it. Not knowing that the, that the sister or brother can be a complete nutcase. You be, you wake up in the middle of the night, wake up, she, she's over you with a knife in her hand. <laughs> You're like, what the hell's going on? Well, she got talent at the moon. She got the window. You hear somebody howling. You hear somebody's dog. Look at your wife. Ooh, what the hell is this? <laughs> that comes from that comes back to you being hasty to credit. Because as the elder brought out, you have what is called even in comedy. They say you had you meet the representative. Never ever meet the real person you're talking to. It takes time to meet the real them, male or female. So you cannot just rush. Like one time, I was to her sister, and she told him, she said, you don't understand love. It's love. You don't understand love. I understand love. I, we love each other. Really? Love each other? Yes, love. It's okay. He stepped back, no problem. Now he didn't come with the phone the table. Yo, yeah, he's lazy. I don't like him. I don't like her. Oh, how long, how long y'all talking? One month. Oh, okay. Well, then continue. That's backwards. It was love then. It was a love now. That's right. It was a yeah. love. Love disappeared right now. Love disappeared because you either have to hope y'all didn't finish and passed out. Now all of a sudden the love is gone now. The lust is gone. That's right. Now you got to start from scratch. Now you got to learn each other all over again. You got to do it now. Whatever issue she has, if she's lazy or simple, or he's lazy or simple, you got to do it. You got to do it with their lazy, simple self. Right. 
because you refuse to prove a friend. No conversation involved, just lust, looking at a Facebook picture, Instagram picture. Well, damn, she fine. Damn, he fine. Oh, okay, okay, sound, he just fine. Now you miserable the rest of your days. Then you want us to end your marriage. Well, she don't believe. He don't believe. Yeah, but you believe in a penis. You believe in a vagina. I don't hear any of that nonsense. You don't want to hear it. But Jake, now you want us to annul your marriage now. Yep. No, we're not going to know that. You stuck with that now. Okay, love. I'm, I'm glad you said that, Deacon Atom. Because America came with a thing he called love. The word love, the human use, the condo may use, is lust. Mm -hmm. There is no such a thing as love because love doesn't wake anything. Love is something that, that grow. Love is something you cherish. Love, but the love we learn in this side, there was lust. That's all it had to do with. It's yeah. lust. It had nothing to do with no love. There was some lust. After the lust disappeared, then now reality start kicking in. You understand? Be very mindful. Don't, don't call up. Don't come in here to clean yourself up. Then caught up something in it. That will make you simple. You understand? You come up here to clean yourself up. Make sure you get the medical record. Make sure you got everything according to what we're telling you. We've been there. We tell you something. We've been there. We examine it. It's never come out to be good. When you go against our council, it's never good. There's nobody who went against that council that, that's good. I'm telling you. Yeah. If you want to have a cherished life, listen what we're giving you. Fight within yourself. Don't give in. That's why you're here. To be a control of your own self. You understand? That's why you're here. How do I control myself? The laws of God is able to do that in your weakness. That's why he told Paul. In your weakness, my laws is powerful. You understand? Understand that. Read it again. 6 verse 7. chapter 6 verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend... Prove him first, and be not hasty to credit him. You know? Bring it. Bring it next first. For some, man is a friend for his own occasion. Some people become your friend for their own personal agenda. They don't really want to be with you. They just want the drawers. They just want the ride. They just want the, they just want the box. Some people are friends for their own occasion. Go ahead. <laughs> and will not abide in the day of trouble. I mean, they will not abide. If you really need them, they're going to stick around. They just want you for that moment. Then they double you. That's what happens. Dig it out, please, sir. Yeah, you know what you say is you. Like, I, the sister will have a son or a daughter. You see that dude act like he loves kids. Mm -hmm. Right. You understand? To get in the heart of their sister. Yeah, and you see, out of all kids, he chooses your kids. Talking about that's a little nice kid. After he used you, he's growing balance. You listen that, you guys don't understand. The only man we can keep up in here is the one that want to apply God's laws. If that nigga sleep with you, he bounce, we cannot... Go get him talking about, hey, brother, you already married her. No, he's out. <laughs> That's why y'all guys don't understand. 19, verse 4. 19. Surat, chapter 19, verse 4. Mm -hmm. He that is hasty to give credit is light-minded. And he that sitteth shall offend against his own soul. Mm -hmm. He that is hasty to give credit is light-minded. You know what that means? He that is hasty to give credit is like-minded. You know what another word for like-minded is? It means you stupid. It means it's rough as it is. Rough as a rough. It means you're simple. When you're hasty to give credit to someone, it means you're, you're foolish. You're simple. Go ahead. He that is hasty to give credit is like-minded, and he that sinned shall offend against his own soul. You hurt yourself when you sin. You're hurting us a bit. You're hurting yourself. You're putting yourself in harm's way. Not nobody else. When you hate it, that's why we tell y'all, take your time. Some of y'all want to go three months, then we're going to get married. Some of y'all want to go two months, we're going to get married. Five months, we're going to get married. Six months, we're going to get married. We say, wait, wait, wait. Let them get mad first. <laughs> Some of y'all, what do you mean? Let them get mad first. See how they act when they get mad. Male or female. If a brother get mad and does this, fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> You better wait. You better wait. Just to get mad and go, mm. <coughs> Wait. They're violent. Some of y'all like them violent brothers. 
Some of them violence is dead. They're cool, they go in the world, feisty. Feisty. She's spicy. No, nigga. She's crazy. Stop. <laughs> to my language. Negro. That's, he's crazy. Don't try to make The world gives excuses for evil. I'm telling you. Feisty. Diva. Gangster. Thug. That's cute in the world. That's evil as hell in here. But some of y'all want to drag that in here. I'm telling you, be mindful that will wait them out. Wait them out. They will reveal themselves. The most I will reveal it. Wait them out. But some of y'all want to just wait out the box. She'll get to me eventually. Wait it out. Give her the flowers. Take her out. That's what y'all do. Or I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna dress so nice for him. Put the makeup on. Kick the makeup like I was saying earlier. Kick the makeup on. Turn to somebody else. Some of y'all turn to different people. I've seen sisters turn to an entire different person. It's witchcraft. Uh, it's crazy. They'll, they'll put makeup on. They become someone else entirely. I go, who is that? That's just a so so. No, it's not. Get out of here. That ain't so so. <laughs> yes, it is. Makeup on, you're like, wow. Makeup on, you're like, oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> not saying they're ugly, but it's the big difference. They'll be pretty without makeup. I see sisters are better without makeup than they do with it. Yeah. And then ages you too, it makes you older. It weighs down your, on your skin. Yeah. You know, this is what I'm talking about. It weighs down on you. You look older than y'all because you put too much on. But again, again, a lot of brothers fall for it, sisters fall for the looks or whatever, and end up in a land of misery. Read again. Surah 19, verse 4. He that is hasty to give credit is like minded, and he that sinneth shall offend against his own soul. So if you're just up, get 27 and verse uh, 7. Same book again. Sirach chapter 27, verse 7. Praise no man or woman before thou heardest him speak. Read again. Praise no man before thou heardest him, hearest him speak. Go ahead. For this is the trial of men. Read again. Praise no man before thou hearest him speak. Stop. Praise no man before you hear them speak. Meaning conversation. That goes on both, both, that goes on both sides. Praise no male or female but lets you hear their conversation. Conversation is key. When it comes to marriage in Israel, conversation is key. Looks comes, of course, we're going to get into that also. Looks matters also. Can't get, you know, some of some, some y'all don't care about looks, some of y'all do. But the most important thing above all else is conversation. Then there's this, this thing called time, where you get old, you get wrinkly. You're not as bad as you was before. I'm not saying you get ugly, you get old, but the looks fade. Gravity, the, the takes effect. gravity takes effect. Things start getting pulled down. Both, both sides. <laughs> Man, you start getting the crow's feet in the side of your eyes. She gets the wrinkles. Nothing wrong with aging together. But after all, the things that you found attractive when you were younger, it changes. And all you have left is conversation. Things don't go up no more like you used to. Sometimes the man get older, he's like, oh, I don't want that no more. I just want to talk now. I'm talking tired. We want to have sex. Why? Let's just talk about stuff. We got to sex all the time. Let's just talk. <laughs> Women be like, hey, you old. Yeah, you are too. We got to have a conversation. We got a conversation. You can talk about how good it was when you were young. Come and tell me the so-so. You live over up there every time. You know, the you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, Conversation's key, man. You get old. <laughs> Kids like ill. Kids even real ill. <laughs> but all you have after a while is conversation. That's the most important thing you have to have when you're young. So you get old, you'll be even better. You understand? You understand what I'm saying? Yes, Y'all should that be the first be the first line of defense is conversation between the male and the female. Right. Okay. Read the next verse. Verse eight. If thou followest righteousness. So jump the verse. Sorry, jump the verse six. Verse six. The fruit declares if the tree has been dressed. The fruit declares if the tree has been taken care of. Go ahead. So is the utterance of a conceit in the heart of man. So is what? So is the utterance of a conceit in the heart of man. Being conversation. You can determine, the same way you can determine how a fruit comes from a well-dressed tree, you can determine the deceit of a man through his conversation. <laughs> or woman through her conversation. You gotta be mindful of these things. Conversation is key. Not a conversation you have with her for a month or two or three or four. Conversation that should last. We gave y'all we time. A year or more. We tell y'all this. Because it matters. Time, we're not saying. Because some of y'all feel like we're, we're, uh, we're trying to restrict you. Oh, you, you trying to boss us around. We're grown men. And women. We can do what we want. Make our own decisions. Yeah, you could, but they'll be stupid. I'll be honest. It'll be simple as hell. Simplistic, simplistic thought process for some of y'all in. 
Y'all need a year or more. I need a year or more, at least. Yeah. Hell, some of y'all need damn five years or more. <laughs> some of y'all, I'm telling, I'm telling you straight, because every time we get counsel, y'all people are hasty. Y'all too hasty. I understand. As a married man, some of y'all here who are single are like, listen, you get, you, 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 you're married. You good. You can get some. I need it now. It's been years. Women too. Men too. But again, you have to learn to control your loins. Learn to be patient. If you mess around, live with the wrong woman or male, and be miserable. Then now you gotta live with somebody you hate. Who would you rather have? A person you live with in love or a person you live with in hate? I think the answer is obvious. Yeah, a lot of, you know, like, uh, a lot of times, yeah, right brothers and sisters don't understand. No, no, no. Like, no, if you have been make good decision for yourself, right? I guarantee you will not be here. I guarantee that. But obviously you're here to get yourself right. right. So let us make the decision for you. Trust you. You can trust us. But we ain't going to lead you the wrong way. You understand? We're going to lead you the right way. Trust me. But right now, all that thought you thought you had, you a grown up woman, a grown up man, leave that thought outside. That's how you heal. You understand? You cannot say that you come here to get healed, but you don't want the medicine we're giving you. That, that don't make no damn sense to me. You know, you in here, you doing all type of slick thing up in here, but you come here to get healed. Right. That make no sense. That's like you going to the doctor. You got to say, the doctor say, you know what? Get loose of all the medicine you ever been take. Then you say, that's one of them I love. I'm going to keep it. I don't care what he said. Then now he realize that the medicine he's been given is not, it's not taking his course. It's crazy. What's going on? Everybody taking the medicine, they change. Why? Something wrong. Then a couple of months come, the doctor call you in. You okay? Yeah, you taking it the time I tell you? Yeah, doctor, I take it. But you never tell the doctor, I, I take another one I love. You understand? That's the world. You understand? What we're giving you here, we're giving you things to change. But you still hold on to something in the world that you realize, why well, I'm still taking evil? Why well, I'm still taking as a nigga woman? I'm still taking as a nigga. Because you still hold on to the friends of the world. You still hold on to the system of the world. Then you realize, why? Why I've been here two, uh, two three years? I'm not even here to yet. But you're not looking within yourself, said, hmm, one day, am I studying hard enough? Am I doing the works that the Lord require of me? Same thing to sisters. Why I'm not acknowledging everybody else's knowledge? I've been here three years. The sister just come in. She act like she's been here four years. The sister just come in here. She have more common sense. Because she know that she's here to be ill, so she's here putting works in. Why you sit here, look like a madam? You're too here. Uh, I see sister put that feet up like that. One other sister to do things for you. Can you take my kids? Okay. When you deal like that, nobody gonna respect you. <laughs> That's why you don't understand. I don't care who wife you are. Nobody gonna respect you. People gonna notice you fake. You understand? At the end of the day, your father gonna reveal. So you better all come in here, ask brother, how do I do to get this? This chain movement. How do I? How do? How do your guys can use me to be a part of this train? Because there's a lot of things in this train. You understand? I know you need help with. But tell me how? How do I? What can I do to change? Your sisters will have time in your hands. You understand? You remember that scripture who said that sister will look far. You understand? Because instead of entertaining things of the world, there's many things you're gonna find. Who's gonna help a brother here? Or going to help your husband instead of working the 18 hours. Guess what? You can find a system. He worked uh, 12 hours. Then he'd be home six hours or, or two, four hours earlier. No. What you doing? You watching things that, that's not going to benefit you. Not going to heal you whatsoever. It's not going to better your life whatsoever. Because these are follies. That's what I'm he's talking about. Marriage is an honorable thing. So you have to take this thing seriously. That's your life involved in that. You're going to meet that man is for your whole life. You better make the right decision. Right. And when you hear people say I'm a grown woman, male woman, the moment you walk on these doors, you're a child all over again. Man. I want to hear that stuff. You are a babe. Not a grown man, nothing. You was grown under car carnally in the world. Yeah, grown. Yeah. But spiritually, you a babe. So you make simple decisions. That's what the most I set up elders as fathers to raise the children up. That's right. To make the right decisions. Because they'll make the wrong decisions and it'll cost you your life. That's a lifelong, that's a lifelong thing, marriage. It's not something in the world you go, I don't like it no more, let's get divorced. 
You see on the signs, all the buses and trains, divorce, 1-800 divorce, so-and-so divorce. The most I like, the most I says I hate divorce. The Lord don't like that stuff. He hates it. Read that, please. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. First Peter 2 and 2, watch this. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. That's during here being fed. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk. Don't care how gray your beard is, how gray your hair is. You are a child all over again. You must be born again. You're not a grown man. You're not a grown woman. You're an older, you're a child. That must be must grow up all over again and forget what you were raised in. And forget right. all of that and grow up all over again. That's right. That's what born again means. Some people don't understand what born again actually means. Born again literally means you're born again. Like you, you're raised up, a child has a lot of crawl fur, they crawl, they, they drink their milk first, after they get they grow their teeth, then they start getting small solid foods, then they start to crawl. And they start grabbing onto things like my son does. Destroy things. <laughs> oh, what is this? I don't know. Destroy it. Oh. That's like kids do. You grow them over. Likewise in the truth. You grow up. You, you, you make mistakes. You do simple things. You destroy things. Yep. You learn from it. You trial and error. And you begin to start to crawl. You start to walk on your own. And eating solids. And you start to judge matters. Dark sayings. And you teach someone else how to, how to um, um, walk and so on and so forth. It's the same thing. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Sure. You have to grow up all over again. The excuse of I'm a grown man and woman, that's carnal talk. That's the devil talking to you. That's, that's, I'm telling you straight, that's the devil talking to you. Go back to where I was at before. Um, Exodus 21, verse 10. The book of Exodus, chapter 21, verse 10. Now we're going to delve into the marriage now. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall not be diminished. Under the old covenant, a man can have multiple wives. When, number one, now understand, when a man had more than one wife, he was able to provide and take care of those multiple wives. Every man you read about in the Bible that had more than one was wealthy. He did not work at Home Depot. He did not work at BJ's packing bags. He did not work in J.C. JCPenney. He was not a telemarketer. These men had land, wealth, animals, Acres, not like two, three. They had lands. Let acres upon acres of land. Wealthy. Wealthy men that can afford to provide. Some of them would say, well, oh God, that's the case. If I'm rich, I can have more than one. No. Because Christ said to Paul, one wife. You're not going to find the scriptures of a man being in captivity having more than one wife. The men lost their wives in captivity. The kings lost their wives in captivity. They were made whores. That's what happened to the kings of Israel. They lost their wives. Some brothers are simple as hell. He's simple as hell. You cannot have more than one wife in this captivity. You cannot. Christ said, listen, you're in captivity. In the meantime, get your minds right. Give you just one for now. When you're reestablished, you can have more than one. For now, one. And, I, and imagine a Negro today have, first off, understand, any man that thinks he has more than one, them wives are taking care of themselves. They know. One brother I know in Israel, in any camp, where he's taking care of all the women. And they're not living the same, under the same roof. They're in their own house, with their own car, paying their own rent. That's right. Or Esau's taking care of them through That's Section right. 8 or welfare. That's right. Or food stamps. That's right. Israel did not have Esau taking care of their other wives. <laughs> Israel took care of their own wives. So it's fairy tales you're seeing on, on YouTube. Fairy tales and delusions of grandeur. That's what it is. Read again. If he take him another wife, her food... Her raiment and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish. So with one wife, that law applies. And Luca it says her food, it says her food, her raiment, and what? Her duty of marriage. Food? Where does food go? Does it go out in the street? Where does food go? Speak? Speak. Where's food go? Where? In a house. In a home. Right? Go ahead. Her raiment. Her raiment? Where does clothing go? House. Go ahead. And her duty of marriage. Where does that take place? In the bedroom, in the house. <laughs> With the man provides for. Read what I'm saying. Shall he not diminish? Shall he not diminish? Not Shall she. not she, not they. Shall he not diminish? Shall he not diminish? Because when a man has more than one, he can take care of both of them equally. Provide for both of them equally. 
Not, oh, you take care of yourself. You got a good job, take care of yourself. You take care of yourself. Then both of y'all take care of me. That's not biblical. That's pimping. <laughs> that's pimp. That's pimping. That's what it is. <clears throat> so this shall he not diminish. He provides the food. He provides the raiment. And the duty of marriage takes place in a bedroom that he provides. A roof over their heads that he provides. Y'all understand? Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Well, you see in Israel where brother said he's a prophet, prophet doesn't work. When you hear it sound like that, uh, it's a sound of a pimp. Yeah, when you hear it, brother talk about prophet doesn't work, then his wife, he got two, three wives supporting him. That's that's a sound of a pimp. Now we telling you straight, you can you can deny the counsel we giving you. You can say, hey, I wanna be the second wife, I wanna be the third wife. That's on you. At the end of the day, what we bringing out, we might we might look those we we got like three, four here. But whatever we say, sister, take heed to it. Mm -hmm. Then he's of the Lord. Trust me. That seduction more or less will fall on this side of the room. <laughs> but but well, sisters usually have no better. They know and they understand that. Because that seduction usually falls on this side of the room. Because brothers cannot control their their, their loins. So that the, the problem is when they come from them, they come to multiple more for wives, mm -hmm. is more on this side. That's where the seduction comes from. The brothers want options. And options will be provided in the kingdom. Not now. Right now, your job is to get yourself right, get your mind right. Um, get um, Ecclesiastes 29 21. No, get, no, I'm sorry, read, read, read verse 11. I gotta bypass that. Read verse 11. Watch this. This is what's ignored. This verse is ignored. Watch this. Exodus chapter 21. Read verse 10 again. Verse, verse 10. 11. If he take him another wife, her food, her raiment, and her duty of marriage shall he not diminish. Okay. And if he do not these three things unto her. If he do not, he does he, he, he provides not these three things, food, raiment, duty, and marriage, go ahead. Then shall she go out free without money. How can they apply that part? <laughs> she can leave you if you don't provide those things. Where's that? Where why can they bring that part out? Understand, it's pimping, it's manipulation, it's hoarding. That's what it all boils down to. If he does not provide those three things, she can go. She can leave based upon that law of multiple. Now, understand the reason why she can go in this chapter is because it's referring to a maidservant. It's not referring to a regular woman. It's referring to a man that has a maidservant. And while that maidservant is working for him, he says, I want to marry you. And he engage, and she's, they're engaged. Then while he's engaged to that wife, he goes and finds another woman. And he says, the Lord says, well, if you do that, you got to provide for them both. If you don't provide for that maidservant, she can leave you. That's what it's going into. So I was going into just a regular sister, another sister being a wife. I was going into a maidservant being promised as a wife. And while, he's, while she's engaged to him, he goes and finds some other chick to marry. And then he neglects her. So by law, that maidservant can leave him. Because there was a job to work for him for six years. And by seven years, she can leave. So that's what that's going into. That's how she can leave. In a regular marriage, woman can't leave at all. Unless he dies or she commits adultery. That's the only way she can go. In this instance, in this context, it's referring to a man being married to a maid servant and then goes and tries to marry another sister at the same time. And that maid servant is neglected after that marriage to the other sister, then she can go. That's what it's talking about. You read from the very first verse, which is also neglected. You understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go to Ecclesiastes 29. 21. Yeah, 29, 21. Sirach, chapter 29, verse 21. The chief thing for life is water and bread and clothing and a house to cover shame. I'm sorry, read really it on time if you didn't get it yet. Read it, read it again. The chief thing for life is water and bread and clothing and in the house to cover shame. The chief thing, let me see one more time, I'm sorry, one more time. Verse 21. The chief thing for life is water, uh -huh, water and bread, bread and clothing raiment, and in the house to cover shame. That's where the duty of marriage takes place. That's where the clothing goes. That's where the food goes. That's the, it says the princess is the chief thing. I mean, the most important things a man is to provide is the, is the water, bread, which goes where? Comes from where? And it goes into the house. Clothing and a house to cover shame. All right? Read the next verse. Better is the life of a poor man in a mean cottage. Not, a good, not, not, not the best home in the world. Go ahead. Than delicate fare in another man's house. Just stay in somebody else's house. Go ahead. Be it little or much, hope be contented. Be happy with what you have, whether it's little or, or much, be happy with what you have. Go ahead. That thou hear not the reproach of thy house. Because you're being, being someone, rather than being someone else's house, they complain about you. Be happy in your own house. Now you can put bread, water, raiment in the house, and a roof to cover shame. You put your wife in that home. 
Y'all follow? Yes, sir. Men, you follow? Yes, sir. yes, sir. Read 39 verse 26. Sirach 39 verse 26. The principal things for the whole use of man's all, life. All the chief things, same thing, go ahead. Are water. Water. Fire. You guys that go to the stove or go ahead. Iron. Uh -huh. And salt. Flour of wheat. Honey. Milk. And the blood of the grape. Wine. And oil. And clothing. And clothing. Go ahead. All these things are for good to the godly. So to the sinners, they are turned into evil. They also be used against you for wicked as hell. So those things are what the man provides the home. Okay? Those things. Get um, 2 Thessalonians 3. So you sisters, y'all must take into account that the man is able to provide these things for you before you even think to marry anyone. He has to be a man of responsibility to provide these things. If you cannot provide these things, he's a waste of your time. Understand, during biblical times, the father was the provider of the house. When a father, we're going to get into that, the husband takes the place of the father. I'm going to say it again. The daughter, a daughter's first love is supposed to be her father. And she, and she sees how the man to treat her based upon how she sees her father treat her mother. And then she takes that and she repeats it, and then the husband takes the place of the father. The provider, the protector, the nurse of the house. That's the husband's job. The husband takes the place of the father. And many of us in this room have not had the pleasure, most of us in this room possibly, have not had the pleasure of being raised in a home where we watch the father deal with the mother biblically. So therefore we must be born again and learn how a father dealt with a husband. Our father, father dealt with a mother you understand? Or how a husband dealt with a wife. You got to read the biblical examples to learn that and glean from it until our children can watch us apply what we read. And they can grow up in seeking the same exact thing. To reverse the cycle of ignorance or the sunken place that our people are in today. You understand? Get, um... 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3 and 6. 2 Thessalonians 3 verse 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly, and not after the traditions which he received of us. So it says for us to withdraw means to remove yourself or remove them from your presence. I mean, put them out. You do not walk orderly or responsibly or irresponsibly. Remove you withdraw yourselves from them. Go ahead. For yourselves know how ye ought to follow because us. Because y'all know better. So Paul is saying, go ahead. For we behave not ourselves disorderly among you. Go ahead. Neither did we eat any man's bread for none. Go ahead. But wrought with labor and travail night and day, that we might not be chargeable to any of you. We worked and took care of ourselves, and so we were not forcing you to take care of us. We took care of ourselves. So we were not chargeable unto you. Go ahead. Not because we have not power. Not because you're not, not because you lack the power to do so, but we, we could have the way I take care of us because we teach you. We could take that power. And use it the way I take we all provide for us. That's what Paul's saying. Go ahead. But to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. We don't because we want to work so that you can learn to work and take care of yourselves as we do. So we don't we don't abuse our power over you. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you that if any would not work, neither should he eat. Man don't work, you don't know, she shouldn't eat. Go ahead. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly. Irresponsibly. Working not at all. Don't want to work. But are busybodies. Nosy, gossiping all over the place rather than where they should be. Working and being, being, acting with being mature, being responsible. Go ahead. Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness they work. I mean, they're not busybodies, they mind their own business. Go ahead. And eat their own bread. And they work and eat their own bread. Go ahead. But ye, brethren... Be not weary in well doing. Go ahead. And if any man obey not our word by the epistle, by this law, this law note that man, and you acknowledge him, and have no company with him, put him out, that he may be ashamed. Go ahead. Yet count him not as an enemy. Don't don't um, cast him away entirely. Go ahead. But admonish him as a brother. But you check him. Listen, bro. Are you looking for a job? You doing what you're supposed to do? That's what he's saying. So the law that the disciples had established was. If man don't work, you don't eat. If you don't want to work, you got to go. Can't walk a sensitive amongst us, just lazy, to take care of you. 
That's disorderly. That's irresponsibility. As a soldier or an officer or a captain, you're walking around with no job, irresponsible, expecting people to take care of you, that's disorderly. You understand? Sir, it's sir. disorderly. Yeah, a, a perfect example would be a, a soldier who's still living with his mom. Right. He's a soldier, but he's still living with his mom. Brother, he was made a soldier to become a man. Now you see officers, and they claim they're officers, but they still live with the mom. And they're looking for, they're looking for, <laughs> trying to talk to sister. Hey, brother, build yourself up first. You already, you already have a decent job, but you want to aim for a wife. You understand? Yeah, get yourself together first, man. That's what the, the Bible is a perfect healing power. Because the world needs the medicine. You understand? The proper way of breaking it down, that's what's going to heal us. And, but you're looking at the soldier talking about still living with his mom. Then he, then he bossing people around here. Hey, brother, clean here, clean there. Brother, you ain't no soldier. You, know, you should be looking down. You should be ashamed of yourself, man. Call yourself a soldier. You used to live with your mom. You had, you, you had not done anything for yourself. You know what I mean? We in, we in Babylon. Let me tell you something about Babylon, man. That if you really want it here, guess what? If you really want a decent job, you can have it. But it's up to you. There's a lot of resources out here, man. That, that, you know what I mean? Like back then, it probably was hard to find. Now, it's so much resource out here, but unless you just a uh, computer dummy or whatever, uh, knowledge dummies, you know what I mean? But there's many things you have to talk to brothers, man. There's a lot of brothers who use their hands to get somewhere. There's a lot of brothers who use their brain to get somewhere. But you can never be a soldier. Then you telling me that, I heard a brother said, uh, uh, he's looking for a wife, by the way you work. Uh, I'm in a, uh, uh, McDonald's. But the, what you gonna, you cannot provide for her. You understand? And especially if she have a kid already. Yeah, but what you gonna, you cannot provide for her, man. Don't play yourself out like that. Yeah, she gonna accept you down the line. She gonna be the one who come back to us. Brother is lazy. He work at McDonald's. Yeah, as the same sisters gonna come back and say the same thing. Get yourself together. As a young man, aim for the best. Aim for the best, man. Be the best. Now, I mentioned earlier about the man who supervise. Am I saying that the man should provide who sits around does nothing? No. Don't that mind go through your mind that a man, the woman who sits around does nothing? No. When you read Proverbs 31, it shows you that the women of old were industrious. They were able right. to buy land, take care of the house, all of that. They were able to do those things. They were responsible themselves. Responsibility spelled, I'll go into that also. I'll let that part out. I'll go into that as well. But women also had obligations and responsibilities themselves to maintain the house that the man's job is to provide for. That's right. Okay, put that out there. Ephesians 4, 28. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 28. Let him that stole steal no more. Go ahead. But rather let him labor. The job. Working with his hands the thing which is good. Go ahead. That he may have to give to him that needed. So our job is not only to work just to work and take care of ourselves, but to help those who may need help work and help those to assist the body. That's what money also goes into. Not just yourself being selfish. No man's an island here. All of us are a nation. We all will be knit as one man. Alright? Get Tobit 7 and 12. The book of Tobit, chapter 7, verse 12. That's why we ask for alms. That's where alms comes from. Alms comes, goes into a man working, laboring, and providing, giving donations and so forth, and contributions to help the body, help those who may be in need. That's where it comes from. Like original royalty, people go, y'all buy from there. The money goes into re to restoring the inventory and also helping the body as well. Keeping the doors open, keeping the lights on, keeping the fans going, providing the, the drinks, the chairs. The electricity, the TVs that, that broke in these, in these TV, tell them, the TV's here. The thing, the floor that was fixed. I think I got everything that was put there. Money. Lights being on, money. The fans here, money. The kitchen, the fridge, the stove, all that food, that's money. Perfect example. Because people work. They cannot, the perfect example is where this congregation came from. Right. Remember that little place they have? So brothers and sisters was able to put their money together, as I already seen this right here. You understand? Then we showing you what you given, what we do with it. Right. Then what you given us, you understand? We showing you the works. Perfect example where we was in Ghana. Guess what? The things that y'all don't know about, we was just struggle for food sometimes. 
And but guess what? We didn't call nobody. You understand? We know that God was able to get us and through that time, guess what? We was able to come back with New York with money. But we were struggle with for food in the garden. To show you God to have these people every place. We don't have to worry. Either you're gonna do it willingly or the Lord gonna pick out the souls to do it. Either or we're gonna do the work. With money or without money, we're still gonna perform what we was born to perform. So we don't want you to have the thoughts like if I don't if I don't do nothing, you're gonna stop this. Many men try. You understand? Many women try. It's still coming out. I remember a sister said, in six months, uh, are you actually was gonna be Strong. done with this story? That was ten years ago, what was that? Nine years, eight yeah. years ago. So we still strong. You understand? Then we I'm telling you. Y'all guys going to be up Five years from now, y'all going to see what we're talking about. Israel is growing fast, brothers. The Lord dog doesn't give us the power to see so. That this year alone, we're about to gather at least 2,000 in Passover. Two years ago, we was gathered, it was at 860. The, the year before, we are this, what was that? Two years ago. No, last year, we gathered 13. Yeah. 13 and some change. But the year before last year, we gathered 860. But this year, we gathered 2,000, include people who stand in their camp. So we're doing our works. Our, our, people is, our people is coming for this medicine, believe it or not. But what really upset me, you don't know how serious it is for the Lord to get you in these doors. Then, brothers, it's hard to maintenance it. Because that's when you need one another. That's when you need the sisters. You have to maintenance your, your lifestyle and how you live. When these laws come out, when these class come out, that's what they're there for. Don't be afraid to ask no questions. You understand? That's what's better yourself. You understand? But don't be a dummy. And you say, you should have asked. Now you see the home said, I messed up. But the floor is over for you. You can call any one of us. You understand? Don't be thinking that we are above our measure. We men. You understand me? But we men of God. That's what makes us different than the men of the world. For the Tobit 7, 14. 7, 12. Book of Tobit chapter 7, verse 12. Where you will say he take her from henceforth according to the man. This is right, well, this is Tobit's father-in-law, his wife's father. Go ahead. For thou art her cousin, and she is thine. And she is yours. Go ahead. And the merciful God give you good success in all things. So what's important to understand is that it says, uh, take after the manner, for she is thine. So when you take a wife, she is yours. She, she becomes your responsibility. She becomes something that you must take care of. She is yours. Like anything else, you get to, it comes to your possession, you got to take care of it, whether it be a car, whether it be a home, whether it be a damn self. You got to take care of it and take care of your wife as your wife is your flesh. You must take care of her, take care of her the same. I'll read on. Continue. Then he called his daughter Sarah, and she came to her father, and he took her by the hand and gave her to be wife to Tobias. See what the father's doing? The father is giving his daughter's hand in marriage to, to, to Tobit. Tobit. I say Tobit Jr. Because Tobit Sr. and yeah, Tobit Jr. <laughs> So you had the father took his daughter and handed her over to Tobit. Why? Because he's handing over his responsibility <coughs> as a father to her husband to fulfill the obligations that he was once responsible for regarding his daughter. As I said earlier, the husband replaces the father. That's law. You understand? That's why the father must be present to give the daughter away because that's the father. He was the provider of the house. Go ahead. And he took her by the hand. My mother was there also, but the father's the one that gives the hand because he's the Lord of the house. Go ahead. And gave her to be wife to Tobias, saying, Behold, take her after the law of Moses, and lead her away to thy father. And he blessed him, and called Edna his wife, and took paper, and did write an instrument of covenants, and sealed it. What's that called today? A marriage certificate. Now, there's a Satan will say to you. That's Esau's paperwork. It's the devil. Don't need paperwork. Okay, so my question is regarding that. When Israel rode a horse and carriage, did they require a license from Rome to ride a horse and carriage? No. When Esau carried swords, did they require a license to carry their swords around? Open carry license. Open carry sword license? Not in there. So now, so, so obviously, in this captivity, you, Israel, Israel, we were once a governing body of our, over ourselves. The things that, that, that Esau provides us, we had on our, of our own. We had our own government, our own elders, our own hall of records, or city hall. We had those things. Esau destroyed it. That's why he said, in want of all things, you must have these things in writing. Give me Sirach 42 now. 
Ecclesiastes 42. Sirach chapter 42, verse 7. If you don't believe in paperwork, you shouldn't have the birth certificate, you shouldn't have that. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have the driver's license, and you shouldn't have Esau's money. Now that's all Esau's paperwork. Get rid of it. Social security card, get rid of it. Driver's license, get rid of it. Gun permit, get rid of it. Registration, get rid of it. You have a deed to a house, get rid of it. Money. You have money, get rid of it. It's Esau's paperwork. Credit cards, debit cards, get rid of it. It's not of Israel. Then you hear, then you hear sounds after that. You say those things, they're quiet now. Tobit 42. I mean, please ask me 42. Sirach 42, verse 7. Oh, yeah. Deliver all things in number and weight, and put all in writing that thou givest out or receivest then. That thou what? That thou givest out or receivest then. Including a daughter or a son. That you givest out or receive in. It should be in writing. Those things are in writing. That's why you read about our forefathers, Jacob marrying Rachel. How you know he married Rachel? Because it's, it's in the Bible, it's in the writing. How you know Isaac married Rebecca? It's in the Bible, it's written down. The Bible itself is a record book. They kept record of these things. How you know, how you know, um, uh, Leah and Rachel were Jacob's wife? It's in the scriptures. It's written down, things written in writing. We're reading about, we're reading from a book of, of things in writing. Even in slavery, Israel used the Bible as a marriage certificate. Some of your Bibles have married two in it. Because the Bible, the Bible itself was a legal marriage document. Even the devil understands that. So the Bible still with paperwork. The Bible's paperwork. People are simple as simple simplicity, man. It's to, it's to avoid being responsible. Brothers don't want marriage papers. They know if I marry this sister and look at paperwork, I can get rid of her whenever I want. That's that Moses, that's that Moses, that's, that, that's what Moses had, Moses had to create childproof laws for Israel. Childproof laws, what's a childproof law? I'll give you an example. Give me um, Matthew 19. I'll give me an example of why Israel does not want math papers. Matthew 19. I'm going to show you why. No, I want. Talking verse uh, 5. The book of Matthew, chapter 19, verse 5. See, that's what I want. Yeah, and said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they no, nope, jump up to verse three. Matthew chapter nineteen, verse three. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife for every cause? They asked a question. Is it lawful? It says tempting, I meaning they knew the answer already. But they were asking the child, took took him in his words. Is it lawful to put away a man's wife for every cause? Even for every, for any reason he wants, go ahead. And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this cause shall a man leave father and mother, and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. Have you not read that? Um, going back to Adam and Eve? Did you not read that in your Bible? He's saying to them, For they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God had joined together, let no man put asunder. Well, therefore, God has joined together like he did with Adam and Eve. Let no man put asunder. Meaning, end it. End the marriage. Go ahead. Or divorce. Go ahead. Watch this. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and put to put her away? So if marriage is something that God put together and no man can put it asunder, why did God allow Moses to establish a bill of divorce? If God, if God put together, then no man put asunder. Why did God allow Moses to establish a law that puts a marriage asunder? So they're trying to be slick. Read the next verse. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to... Go ahead and out. Go ahead. He said unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. So because of the hardness of your hearts, Moses allowed you to divorce your wives legally. Go ahead. But from the beginning, but from before Moses, go ahead, it was not so. There was no such thing as divorce. But oh, the Lord knew, Moses knew, if I didn't establish that law, they would do it anyway. Right. That's why he said, listen, you can divorce her. Let's put it in writing that you divorce her. Because you're passing her around like a whore. <laughs> so have it in writing that she's divorcing this brother. So they're not both, banging it, both, they're not both having sex with someone each other's wife. With the same woman. <laughs> Make sure there's a legal document that shows that she was married to this guy no longer. That's why I was putting it writing. But from the beginning, there was no such thing as divorce. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So Moses had to create a law to
to regulate the wickedness of the Israelites of the, of, of the wilderness. Because they would have did it anyway. Get to Rabbi 24. So that's why Israel men today don't want marriage papers. Put her away for any cause. And lack and to avoid the responsibility of having to go through the whole thing of paperwork and all that. They don't want all that. They just want to just get rid of them. Sleep under the rug. Deuteronomy chapter 24, verse 1. I've heard Israelites say things like, we're getting divorced. We divorced. D-I-V-O-S-T. We divorced. Because we have irreconcilable differences. What scripture is that? What scripture is irreconcilable differences? Where is that in the Bible? That's why I don't paperwork. Stupidity. 24, verse uh, 1. one. When a man have taken a wife and married her, and it comes to pass that she find no favor in his eyes, because he had found some uncleanness in her. Stop, he had found what? Some uncleanness in her. He found some reason to go, I don't like her no more. That's that some uncleanness goes into every cause. I don't like her no more. One toe is longer than the other. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't like why I don't, why, I don't like why her hair is that kinky, I don't like that. Uh, she don't gonna cook that well. Uh, they will find any reason they could to get rid of the woman. Yeah, you know what? Then let him write her a bill of divorcement. I mean, put but God joined together, it can be put asunder. He established a law that puts a marriage asunder. Go ahead. And give it in her hand and send her out of the house. The reason why that was established is because Israel was wicked as hell and would have done it regardless. So Moses said, fine, if you're going to do that, at least according to the law, put it in writing. To cause to what? To, to avoid confusion. That's why he established the law. But from the beginning, there was no such thing as divorce. Until Moses stepped foot in the scene to regulate Israel's wickedness. Another example. Get 21 verse 15. I'm digressing for a second. Deuteronomy chapter 21 verse 15. Right. If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated. So a man has two wives. One he loves, one he doesn't like that much, one he hates. Now, what's the law say about your neighbor? What's the law say about your neighbor? Let's see, stand up. What's the law say about God? You speak loud. You're supposed to love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love your neighbor as, does it go, does it go for your wife too? Yes, it does. Yes, it does, because your wife is your neighbor. Neighbor is the children of your people. Have a seat, thank you. So, the law is love your neighbor as yourself. To love your neighbor as yourself. Read from the top again, please. If a man have two wives, one beloved and another hated. Is that a righteous man reading about here? No, this man is wicked as hell. He loves one wife and hates the other. That's unlawful to hate your wife at all. Go ahead. And they had born him children. And one, and one love born with a child for him. And one hated had a child for him. Go ahead. Both the beloved and the hated. Go ahead. And if the firstborn son be hers that was hated. If the firstborn son is the son of the, one, of the wife that he does not like. Go ahead, the firstborn. Go ahead. Then it shall be when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he hath, that he may not make the son of the beloved. Firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. So this law is to establish that if a man has a, the wife that he hates, had the child, had his first child, he had to give that child of the of the hated, the firstborn, more inheritance than the child of love who was born afterwards. Why? Because of, why? Because Moses was the most high knew Israel would take care of the one that's loved more than the one that's hated. This is called child support today. That's what this is. The most high punishes according to our wickedness. So now he has this, the devil forcing us to do something that Moses had to force us to do thousands of years ago. Y'all understand? Read again. Then, uh, verse 15. If a man have two wives and one beloved and another hated, and they have borne him children, both the beloved and the hated, and if the firstborn son be hers that was hated, then it shall be. When, the, when he maketh his sons to inherit that which he had, yep. that he may not make the son of the beloved firstborn before the son of the hated, which is indeed the firstborn. He may not neglect the child of the hated. He got to put the child that's been hated first, the one that he hates, had his firstborn. So that one must be provided for first. Because the firstborn, regardless of his hatred towards the, 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 um, the hated, the child, has nothing, the child has nothing to do with the mother. He hates the, 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 the firstborn's mother. That nothing to do with the child. But like today, you have men who have children of, from a woman they don't like. They'll get rid of her, 
remarry and then neglect both the hated baby moms and the kids. And then the kids. So most that established a law and said, listen, no longer you hate her, you take care of that child regardless. That child, that mother, the woman you hate had your firstborn son. Don't neglect that child. So the most I had established a law to force Israelite men to take care of their kids or women they hate. Like Esau does against the men today. Continue. But he shall but he shall acknowledge the son of the hated for the firstborn by giving him a double portion of all that he had. For he is the beginning of his strength. The right of the firstborn is his. Alright, so that goes once again. Now, understand me. Esau does take that, of course, he has this corruption and it extorts us. Yes, he does. But that goes back to us being punished according to the iniquity of our fathers. Each, each punishment that we're suffering now was a consequence of each law we broke under Moses. You understand what I'm saying? We were punished according to our iniquity. So the most time I had Esau do things to us that we were doing to each other before he even showed up. That's what y'all don't understand. So these are laws that were established to keep Israel in order, in line. Go back, go to um, Tobit now again. I digress for a second. Let the Tobit again. And these laws was, were made to establish what? Response the point. To establish responsibility. That's why I went over that. Tobit, uh, he was in Tobit, um, <laughs> seven. Seven and twelve. Yeah, no, we passed that. Uh, 14. 14. 14. Yeah. Tobit chapter, chapter 7, verse 14. And called Edna his wife and took paper and did write an instrument of covenants and sealed it. So he wrote a bill, a bill of marriage. How can that be a bill of divorce and not a bill of marriage? That don't make sense in itself. Go ahead. Then they began to eat after Reguel called his wife Edna and said unto her, Sister, Prepare another chamber and bring her in thither. Uh, I mean, a, wedding, a chamber is a wedding chamber. Go ahead. Which, what she had done as he had bidden her, she brought her thither. So notice, Son, notice what's happening. The father takes this, his daughter, hands her into the hand of Tobit. Then he writes down the marriage documentation. He writes down the confirmation of being given together, being brought together. Then they, have, then they built up, they set up the what? The wedding chamber for them to do what? Consummate. To consummate it, to complete it now. To complete the marriage. So the writing came first, the wedding came first, then the writing came, and then the consummation came after. The writing confirms the consummation. You understand? You do it backwards today. Y'all do it but our brothers doing backwards today. Y'all y'all right. bang it go the chamber first, <laughs> then the paper, then the parents. That's not what this says. It says you first you go to the parents. If the parents, of course, are royal and carnal, you come to the leadership. The fathers, the fathers are there. Then from there, you go, okay, from there, paperwork. Then from the paperwork, we have the wedding feast and so forth. Then y'all go about your business into the wedding chamber. <laughs> that then we celebrate. That's how it goes. Israel's doing it backwards. <clears throat> Good luck with that, Nikki. Yeah, right? <laughs> We've been with that for the past few years. <laughs> That's right. Good day, continue. Uh, verse 17. Which when she had done no, as... No, but some brothers have done it. Yeah, some brothers. Some brothers have actually yeah, done on it. it. On it, on it. Yeah. On it, go ahead. Verse 17, which when she had done as he had bidden her, she brought her thither, and she wept, and she received the tears of her daughter, and said unto her, Be of good comfort, my daughter. The Lord of heaven and earth give thee joy for this thy sorrow. Be of good comfort, my daughter. Go ahead, verse 8, chapter 8, verse 1. And when they had supped, they brought Tobias in unto her. Now jump to verse, uh, we're going to jump down to verse 4. Verse they 4. They brought Tobias in unto her, and she, they put her into the tent. And they presented Tobias to go into the tent with her to consummate. Verse 4. And after that, they were both shut up together. Shut in together into the marriage chamber. Go ahead. Tobias rose out of the bed. And they, said, con and they, con they consummated the marriage. They had sex. They consummated it. Go ahead. Tobias rose out of the bed and said, Sister, arise, and let us pray that God will have pity on us. Go ahead. Then began Tobias to say, Blessed art thou, O God of our fathers, and blessed is thy holy and glorious name forever. Let the heavens bless thee and all thy creatures. Thou made us Adam and gave us from Eve, his wife, for the helper and state. That's what Christ talked about in the beginning. It was not so. Adam and Eve. Go ahead. Of them came mankind. Thou hast said, it is not good that man should be alone. Regarding Adam. Go ahead. Let us make unto him an aid like unto himself. Eve. Go ahead. And now, O Lord, I take not this my sister for lust. Stop. Read it again. And now, O Lord, 
I take not this my sister for lust. That's the heck. But uprightly. But righteously. I take not my sister for lust, but uprightly. That's why we tell y'all to wait. Wait. Take your time. Be patient. Wait. 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 Do not take her for lust. Do not take her go to her for sexual desires. That should that's no. That's how a marriage ends up being chaotic. It says, take not my sister for lust, but uprightly. Go ahead. Therefore, mercifully ordained that we may become aged together. That's what your mind should be. Not let us mercifully ordain and be banged and then I don't like it no more over somebody else. That's what the world says to do. The scriptures say, mercifully ordained that we grow old together. Not put asunder, not separate or divorce after a few years. It says grow old together, age together. Like I was that joke earlier about how all you have this conversation. Wrinkles and conversation is left. Go ahead. Uh, eight. Verse 8. Verse 8. And she said with him, Amen. And he, she agreed. She said, Amen. That's wedding vows. <coughs> These are wedding vows. So then we on um, verse uh, 6, verse 5 and down. That's wedding vows. Alright, so now let's go to um, chapter 10, verse 12. Tobit <coughs> chapter 10, verse 12. And he said to his daughter, Honor thy father and thy mother-in-law, which are now thy parents. Read it again. Honor, and he said unto his daughter, Honor thy father and thy mother-in-law, honor your, honor your husband's parents, go ahead, which are now thy parents, go ahead. that I may hear good report of thee. That I may hear what? That I may hear good report of thee. That I may hear good report of you. Go ahead. And he kissed her. Edna also said to Tobias, The Lord of heaven restore thee, my dear brother, and grant that I may see thy children of my daughter Sarah before I die. Grandchildren, go ahead. That I may rejoice before the Lord. Behold, I commit my daughter unto thee of special trust. So understand that when a man when you a man is given a wife, he is committed unto is committed unto him is special trust. What does special trust translate to? Responsibility. I commit you to be responsible with our daughters, what she's saying to him. Edna saying to him, go ahead. I commit my daughter unto thee of special trust. Go ahead. Wherefore, do not entreat her do, evil. Do not entreat her evil. That's why we tell y'all to get paperwork. That's why we tell y'all to be responsible, to have a job, to be stable, to provide the wheat, the cheap things, principal things of the house, the food, the raiment. Duty of marriage. That all falls to being a special trust. Responsibility. Brothers don't want to, brothers don't want to do that. They want the hotel room. They want to bang her in her parents' house or bang her in his parents' house. That's immature. That's childish, man. You sister should have more respect for yourself to let a man take you into his mama's house or your mama's house and bang you in your parent in his in his old room as a kid. That's childish, man. <laughs> That's the time. Let's go to my old room when I was in high school. Come on, man. Really? That's the time, man. I'm going to say that. That's Have more pride for your, for your body, for yourself, man. Let a man take you into his old bedroom. He got Ninja Turtles all over the walls, footballs, pictures everywhere, G.I. Joe's on his dresser. Come on, man. Take him into your own. He's going to take you into his own home. And before all that take place, um, introdu um, the, um, introduction, wedding feast, papers, all that should come first before, he, before you even set foot to his door. Before all of that. But y'all want to go backwards. And that's how you end up coming before us with your complaints. He ain't doing this. She ain't doing that. He got something wrong with this. She got something wrong with that because y'all are responsible. Yeah. Those are good memories that you share with your daughter that is after you. Then he's able to share, she able to be the, uh, go to the same marriage and showing it to her daughter. That's what, that's how you build a nation. But if we always been divided, then how would we build the young men to be kings? How would you build the young daughters to be strong? You understand? Because the house is always divided. You guys don't understand the power. You know how Satan uh, attacked Adam? Adam was a mighty man on earth, believe it or not. You see me how he go to the old woman attack Adam? He attacked the family structure. Think about it, man. You ain't here to get yourself together. Just think for a minute. Go ahead, Dickie. Well, Genesis, Genesis um, 31, 48. This is the agreement that Laban 
had with Jacob regarding his daughters. Mm -hmm. They made an agreement, a covenant. This is Jacob's father-in-law. Genesis chapter 31, verse 48. And Laban said, This heap is a witness between me and thee this day. Therefore was the name of it called Gilead. Mm -hmm. And Mizpah, for he said, The Lord watch between me and thee, when we are absent one from another. Yeah. If thou shalt afflict my daughters, or if thou shalt take otherwise beside my daughters, no man is with us. See, God is witness between me and thee. Read again, read verse um, 50 again. Verse 50. No, verse 49 again. Verse 49. This is Laban said to, his, to um, Jacob. In Mizpah, for he said, The Lord watch between me and thee, when we are absent one from another. Because this is our oath. The Most High watch, watch you, Jacob, and my daughters while we're absent from each other. Go ahead. If thou shalt afflict my daughters. If thou hurt my daughters, go ahead. Or if thou shalt take other wives beside my daughters. You get, rid of, get rid of my daughters and take other wives, go ahead. No man is with us. See, God is witness betwixt me and thee. So he, the oath was, don't do that. Don't hurt my daughters and don't get rid of my daughters and I'm gone. Keep my daughters. That's what he's saying to him. So he, the fathers of old had a special care. They, they always told the husbands to have a special trust for their wives. Or for their daughter or for their daughters in this instance. You understand? So the same way Tobit's parents in law told him, listen, I give it to thee a special trust, the bond told Jacob the exact same thing. Don't afflict my daughters and don't get rid of my daughters. Don't divorce them. Don't replace, or don't replace them. That's what he's saying. 30-30. Let's see what kind of mindset Jacob had regarding his um his family. Because Laban was was basically an extortioner. The Bible was wicked as hell. The Bible was, extort was extorting Jacob for 20 years. Extorting him, using him, because Jacob brought him blessings. But watch what happens. Jacob got tired of this. Let's see what he says. 30, 30. The book of Genesis, chapter 30, verse 30. For it was little which thou hadest before I came. You know, when I got here, you had, you had little. Now you have more. Go ahead. And it is now increased unto a multitude. Now, now you have a whole bunch. Go ahead. Now you're wealthy. Go ahead. And the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming. And now, what shall I provide for my own house also? What did he say? And now, what shall I provide for my own house also? When can I provide for my house? I won't take care of your house no more. I looked up for you. I worked for you, for your daughters. I got your daughters. And you're still extorting me. It's time for me to leave and take care of my own house. See how responsible Jacob was? A responsible man. It's time for me to leave. Take my wife and kids and go and take care of my own, get my own place. Stop us to go. You're using me up here. And the bond, of course, the bond chased after him. The bond was wicked as hell, man. The bond was wicked. But eventually the most side led Jacob away from him, along with his wives and children and so forth. But he said, it's time for you to leave and take care of my family, man. Provide my own. That's what Paul got. Let's get that. First Timothy 5 and 8. This is where Paul got it from. First Timothy 5 and 8. The book of 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8. Mm -hmm. But if any provide not for his own. His own means your own people. Go ahead. And especially for those of his own house. Especially those of his own household. Go ahead. He had denied the faith. You don't believe in God. Go and it's worse than an infant. And you're worse than an unbeliever. So the Bible says if a man is provide for his own house, he is worse than an idolater. He's worse than an atheist. That's the Bible saying. If a man provides not for his own house. And they, of his, and they of his own house, meaning the body, his people, and his own house, he has denied the faith. And is worse than an unbeliever. You're worse than an idolater. Get Genesis 2. Read this in Matthew 19, but he's Christ quoted in Matthew 19. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21. Genesis 2, verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. This is literal. Go ahead. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman and brought her unto the man. Well, to Adam, this, this is a father bringing his daughter to the son. It's a marriage. It's a wedding. Go ahead. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Literally. Go ahead. She shall be called woman. Go ahead. Why? Because she was taken out of man. Woman means out of man. Woman means out of man. Go ahead, or of man. Go ahead. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother 
and shall cleave unto his wife. Shall a man do what? Leave his father and his mother. Therefore, from this point on, shall a man leave father and mother. And shall cleave unto his wife. And shall cleave unto, unto his wife. Go ahead. And they shall be one flesh. They shall be what? And they shall be one flesh. One flesh of Christ is quoting in Matthew 19. Ephesians 5, no, verse uh, 22. 22 yeah. Ephesians 5, verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Read verse 21. Verse 21. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Meaning the commandments. Go ahead. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Submit your, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Now, some sisters will say, well, he ain't no Abraham. He ain't no Isaac. Well, I got news for you. Some of you, some of you here ain't no Sarah. And some of you here ain't no Rachel. <laughs> So that, it goes both ways. I can't, I can't stand that statement. It goes both ways. Both men and women are a work in progress. In Christ, we are a work in progress. You're not going to be perfect. It's going to take time. We strive for perfection. Strive every day. So both y'all got to help each other become that Abraham and become that, that Sarah. Y'all got to help each other to go into that and respect each other. Not, oh, well, he's not acting like an Abraham. You ain't acting like a damn, you ain't acting like a Sarah. It's both ways. Both of y'all one flesh, so y'all gotta fix each other and help each other. It's not, oh, well, he ain't this side, but that gonna submit himself to him, because he ain't doing that. That's ridiculous. We can go both ways. That mindset is negro. Is negro. That's, the, that's that sunken place again. That's, he saw, that's the white man taking the freaking driver's seat, and you in that dark place, sunken place, floating around. That's you. And you talk like that. Those of you who saw Get Out know what I'm talking about. Those of you who don't talk, those of you who don't see Get Out, have no clue what I'm saying. If you go see Get Out, you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to spoil it. Um, read on. Verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Yeah. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. Yeah. And he is the savior of the body. So Christ is the head of the wife, even as Christ, I'm sorry. For the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. So he's giving us a similar two. He's comparing the marriage of a man and woman between Christ and the body of Israel, which is the church. Go ahead. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives to their own husbands in everything. Meaning in, in, in fear of God and righteousness. Not he sniffed coke, I sniffed some coke too. He smoked synthetic weed, I smoke K2 also. He does bath salts, I should do bath salts with one flesh. No, that's what it. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's all it means. It means in the fear of God to beat each other. Go ahead. He robbed a bank. I'll help. I'll be, the, I'll be the lookout. I'll be the getaway driver. That's not all that means. Go ahead. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. He died for it. Go ahead. That he might sanctify and cleanse it, the church or the marriage. Go ahead. With the washing of water by the word. Which goes into us being what? Applying these laws and we grow as we won't bathe together. And we, as a work in progress, you're gonna have you're gonna have bumps in the road. You're gonna have issues. You're gonna argue because men and women are very, 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 very different. Very different. Physically, mentally, we are spiritually but different. So there are gonna be issues. There's gonna be opposition. There's gonna be issues. But you gotta work through it. Christ, Christ helped the church. That was an obstacle for him too. It's good to say that Christ marvels at the disbelief of Israel. You know what it, is? it takes to make the Son of God marvel at you. You got to be a high level of, of evil for the Son of God who, had, who saw everything from the beginning of time look at you and go, what is this? <laughs> he know what everything is, but he's like, yo, what, what, what the hell is this? Yeah. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, yeah. not having spot or wrinkle. That marriage, same thing, go ahead. Or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Yeah. So ought men to... Without, sorry, without blemish is going into sin, go ahead. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. Remember Adam said, love bone of my blood, flesh of my flesh. You had bone of bone, bone, what do you say? Flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood. Right, go ahead. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. He that loves his wife what? Loveth himself. He that loves his wife loves himself. That's why I read earlier in Deuteronomy 21 about that man that has one wife that was loved and one that hated. He was evil as hell. But the scriptures say a man that loves his wife loves himself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Your wife is your neighbor. It's all it goes it's hand in hand. Go ahead. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourish it and cherish it then. 
even as the Lord the church. So no man yet, yet ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it. You nourish your body, you cherish your body, you wash your behind. Well, some of y'all don't. <laughs> Both to nourish yourself, cherish yourself, and likewise it goes to your wife. It goes to nourish your wife. Shall you nourish? Shall you nourish? You take, you provide. You're the provider. You take care of. Your, your body needs water. You give it water. Your body needs food. Give it food. Your body needs to be clean. You clean it. Likewise, the wife needs to, she needs she needs a tub to wash. You need she needs to go to the store to buy the soap. You need to need to put food on the table. Put juice in the fridge. Clothes on her back. Roof over her head. The same thing you do for your body, you do for your wife. It's the same thing. Responsibility for your body is the same responsibility for your wife. The same way Christ has responsibility for the church. His body, his, his body, he used, he used his body responsibly to sacrifice it for the church. It's the same thing. Go ahead. Want to say something about okay? Yeah, you forgot the uh, same way you teach yourself is the same way you teach your wife. Right. So she can be a good tools. You might do something stupid say, hey, babe. You know that's wrong, you know what I mean? But if you never teach her, then how could she able to be a good tools to you? Yeah, she cannot help you. A perfect example was Abraham and uh, Sarah. Mm -hmm. You understand? So a perfect example was this. That's why your sisters have to study. You have to study, your men have to teach you as well. You understand? We have to, we have to become the new creature, regardless what it is, sisters. You have to become a photocopy of your hus a husband. You understand? When you open your mouth, sis, it sounds not just like your husband. Because you and your husband are supposed to be one. You understand? That's why they have to be. Because their husband going to make another him. is you. You understand? You're supposed to be his twin. Whatever he's opening his mouth, that's what you will say. Oh, babe, I was thinking about the same thing. Because he make you like that. You understand? I know what my husband can do. I know what he cannot do. You understand? Because he made me. You understand? He tell me about himself. You want to be, when I see that smile, hey, hey, shalom, sis, what's going on? You understand? Yeah. That's how you want to be. That's what that man expect you to be. Hey, baby, you okay? When you get from work, you want what kind of food you want? What kind of, what kind of, what, what is your favorite? I found out in the sisters, they will cook your food, right? You say that, then she will say, oh, I cook this wife. I said, that's not the wife I like. But I've been cooking your wife the whole week. That's not my question. That's not what I ask you. I ask you that if you ask me, you're going to do what I like. I have to tell you the other wife that I like. That, you, you understand what I'm saying to you? But they want to put their own two spin in it. Then when you mad, that they, they, uh, they said, you know, uh, uh, you should be happy that we, I cook for you. Like, sister, listen, that's not the wife I like. <laughs> Some brothers come home from work, what they do? They come home from work, they drive, they get off work. They drive, they pull into the driveway, they pull up, turn the car off. <laughs> I'm like, three hours. Where are you? I'm outside. She come out, she come to the car, she see you like this in the car. You alright? No, I'm not, uh, not, not anymore, not you, sure I'm not. <laughs> you don't want that, man. You don't want that. Somebody was going to the bar before they go home. They go to the bar. Hit me. <laughs> Reload. <laughs> One more. It might crash, hopefully. <laughs> but listen, you don't want that, man. That's why we tell y'all to wait. Oh, some women do that. Hit me on. <laughs> this nigga, <thing>, man. <laughs> and some, it's, that's why we tell y'all to wait. Wait. Wait responsibly. Or go home, go home to a damn Twix moment. Every, few, every five minutes. You don't want that. You want to go home happy. You want to rush home. I go straight home. I don't stop. I go straight home. I, I hate the... the you have, if, you, if your wife has you to the point where you could stay in the world for more than the hours you have to be, something wrong. Because your state table should be your house. If you, if, you, if you can stay in the world more than in your house, something is terribly wrong. That's not good. Because I rush straight home. Because I hate the world. I hate it. I, people, I, I start work nights. So I ain't got to see people. I don't got to talk to nobody. I don't got to see nobody. If I do, I go in the room. I don't see nobody. Work clean go, and go in the room. But if you feel comfortable, more so at work than you do at home, 
It's not good. It means you made the wrong decisions. And a lot of brothers came, come out, came out of marriages like that. Come out of that. That's why you learn from the experience and don't make the same mistake twice. Learn from your mistake. That's why some brothers in here may catch spirits regarding the child support thing, but guess what? That was your carnal decision. You was in the world, you didn't know any better, you picked the wrong woman. So now you gotta learn from your mistake, you gotta grow from it. Your child gonna wait, wait till you wait till what? The child's what, 18? 18. Then you free to go? Or oh, 20 is 20, uh, 21. 21, I'll give you an example. Oh, um, uh, oh, oh, uh, um. Oh, I'm gonna say who. A brother, a brother is to show me the, the um his his check stuff. So see my see right there it says the deduction, child support. Don't do what I did. He used that as an example. I couldn't believe it. Look, 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 look at my check. Look, look at my check. Look at it. Look how low it is. Look at the deduction. He said, bro, don't do what I did. You can use that as a, as an example to learn to teach others not to make the same mistake that you made. You may look at it and go, damn man, he sold the devil, take my money. But again, it's a mistake that you have to learn from. As a child, it's a child. Right. You learn from it, you grew from it, you repented. Now you marry somebody else, made the right decision now. You can take that and go, bro, don't rush. Otherwise, you're going to mess around with this paycheck. Look at your paycheck, look at that. And getting docked. You could be, be a living example. That's why Christ said be a living sacrifice. You'd be a living example. Your brothers that, 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 that want a wife, then she might take you, then when you have two, oh, two kids in the world, guess what, she might not complain now when you talking to her. Down the line, like I done just said, when the checks start not being straight, you're gonna hurt it from their sister. You understand, you're gonna hurt that. So, your guys be very mindful, man, when you, you know what I mean, when you come to a relationship, knowing that what kind of sister she is, mm -hmm. and your sister know what kind of brother you working with. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, like, because, and uh, I think I heard her sister had a business, Brothers just came in and thought about put their business in my name because I'm the man inside the house. Then when the destroy the whole business. Yeah. Your sisters be very mindful talking about putting it in your name you because you the Lord inside the house. When you know that man can even deal with finance. Brother is a contractor, sister and to finance talking about putting it in my name. What you know about finance? Nothing. You doing good. Just stick with the bricks. Put bricks down. <laughs> you understand? But uh, you're going to see brothers do that. Right? Talking about that, you know what I mean? I put that thing in my, I mean, put the, uh, your sister be very mindful on that, man. Ecclesiastes 7 uh, 25. So right, chapter 7, verse 25. Marry thy daughter. You read about that all day. Marry your daughter. Ragnarok married his daughter over to Tobias. Levine married his daughter over to Jacob. Go ahead. And so shalt thou have performed a weighty matter. Because marriage is a weighty, it's a serious matter. Let it be played with. We gotta take marriage very seriously. Go ahead. But give her to a man of understanding. And that's what Raguel ended day regarding Tobit. That's what Laban did regarding Jacob. Gave her to a man, gave them to men of understanding who apply God's laws. Go ahead. Has thou a wife after thy mind? Do you have a, a wife? That I was said earlier. Mm -hmm. Do you have a wife after your mind? Is she like you? Go ahead. Forsake her not. Don't get rid of her. The same thing that Sir Laban told Jacob. Don't replace my daughters with somebody else. Keep my daughters. Keep your wife. Go ahead. But give not thyself over to a light woman. <laughs> Don't give yourself to a light woman. My Bible says hateful woman. Which still goes on being simple. <coughs> Do not give yourself over to a light or a hateful evil woman. A simple woman, don't do it. So it goes both ways. Give, to a, give your daughter to a man of understanding, and give not yourself over as a man to a wicked woman. And those of you who have suffer the consequence of that child support. Some of y'all deal with it. Some women pay child support. Believe it or not, you got women paying it. I've heard instances of that. The women's like, I go, I go, go, go pay child support. I'm like, wow, really? That's rare, but it happens from making mistakes. I'm telling you. You learn, you live and you live and you learn. Go to Ecclesiastes 14 and 5. Let's see, what, let's see what a man does that does not love himself, that hates himself. 14 verse 5. So right, 14 verse 5. Okay. He that is evil to himself, to whom will he be good? Read it again. He that is evil to himself, to whom will he be good? A man that's evil towards himself. He gets drunk, he gets high, he overeats. He don't want to do want to wash himself. He is filthy. Don't take care of himself. Doesn't groom himself. To a man that that hates himself, to whom will he be good? Go ahead. 
He shall not take pleasure in his goods. He will not, his goods will be his home, himself, his wife. He won't treat those things well. Go ahead. There is none worse than he that envieth himself. There's none worse than a man that hates himself. That's where your drug dealers come from. That's where your gangbangers come from. That's where the men that say, I'm, the girl says, I'm pregnant. And the nigga go, so what you going to do? That right there is the man that hates himself. Read it again. There is none worse than he that envieth himself. And this is a recompense of his wickedness. This is a reward of his wickedness. Go ahead. And if he does good. If he does do any kind of good whatsoever, any good, go ahead. He doeth it unwillingly. He doesn't really want to do it. He has to be forced to do it. Go ahead. That goes back to a man that either has to pay child support because he makes a child, don't want to deal with it, he's running from child support, whatever. That goes into all of that stuff. Or he don't want to take care of his wife, he don't want to take care of his kid, he don't want to work, he don't want to do nothing. He does things un... You got to pull teeth to make him go get a job. He does things unwillingly. Go ahead. And at the last, he will declare his wickedness. And in the end, you're going to see that dude was wicked as hell. You're going to see it. Go ahead. The envious man had the wicked eye. The envious, envious man has a hateful eye. He looks for fault in others rather than checks himself. Go ahead. He turneth away his face. He hates correction. Go ahead. And despises men. And he hates men when he's trying to be corrected. Turns away his face and despises men. Because he's envious towards himself. If he hates himself, he's damn sure ain't gonna love you. Because it, uh, it's the same thing, man. You, you know, read that scripture again. Verse, verse 8. The envious man hath the wicked eye. He turneth away his face and despiseth men. Because when you're looking at brothers, and uh, you're just like. A brother that is a, a, a stortioner, brother that is like just looking for opportunity mm -hmm. just to do evil. You know what I mean? Uh, like they're looking for the newcomer. You understand? To abuse. They're looking for the sisters to abuse. Your brothers, man, let me tell you something about yourself. You got um, evil brothers. You have some, you got some evil demonic spirit you're dealing with. You understand? Be very mindful, man. Why you up in here? You want to keep a name for yourself. But you ain't here to win games. For, uh, a brother just came in. You and, hey, brother, let me borrow 20. Hey, brother, a brother been, uh, uh, sister just come in. Uh, sister, let me borrow 100. That, that's not the right spirit to hold up in here, man. Those are evil spirit, man. Being honest with you. Because you thought, you thinking that you're more smart than God himself. You understand? Hey, keep a name to yourself, man. Keep a good names. Because as soon that you had that demonic spirit going out there, everybody know about you, they ain't going to respect you. But they ain't going to respect you. By the time you clear your name, guess what? You're known from that. Oh, stealing money from the school. You're known from that. Nobody going to respect you, man. The lying spirit. Nobody going to respect you. <laughs> you understand? Every time you open your mouth, will be lying. Then your sister that is gossiper, you're not building a good name for yourself. Always in people's business. Not building nothing for yourself. You want to have a name. When you're never mentioned, let's see, that sister here is a good sister. We never heard nothing about this sister. That brother here, guess what? We never heard nothing about this brother. He's good. Got good spirit. You don't want to be that brother said, man, I don't have no comment. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that sister here? I don't have no comment. You understand? You want to be like I was talking to Captain, and we was in a room talking. I say, your brothers don't understand. A name is everything. I said, for example, if I'm going to something to with my family, I just go on, uh, what, what we have? Glad, group me. So I go and group me. I said, I need me, I said, uh, I need me a place to stay. Deacon Lava need a place to stay. I said, as soon that I send out the scent, I guarantee you a second ago I'm going to have a lease. But those say, Deacon Lava, come to my house. But if you see the name, your name ain't right. Then they all say, hey, brother, you had that statement the brother put in here. Oh, that is the brother. Oh, that was that brother coming there. I thought you, you know, you had his wife. I said, hey, you want to stay to my house? I'm not going to lie to you. Let's stay to my house. That was that lying sister. You remember that lying sister? Every sister let her stay in her home that she always been rejected. I don't want that sister to stay with me. You understand? Build a name. When your name is good, guess what? People are going to answer your call. In all time, even though they're asleep, who's this? And there's Captain Allen, let me answer the phone and see what he want. Or that sister, let me see what she want. 
you want to build a name. With the names you build, they bring a character. Then your son and your daughter, their names pray to them. So if you pass away, guess what? Like I, I say, oh, that's Deacon Nathan's son. You know what I mean? Hey, but he can come live with me all anytime you want. But if see, Deacon Nathan was a demon, that's Deacon Nathan's son. Hey, hey shalom. But <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying to you? You want to build a name, man. Among, among your, your peers, you want to build a name. Among the Israelites, you want to have a name. Well, in your name, everybody know that brother is a good brother. Sister is good. Go ahead. Go to um, um, 2 Maccabees 3 and 10. The God the responsibility because Israel always had a responsibility when it came to women, when it came to children, we made them priority. Men made that priority. Whether they were, but if it wasn't their child or their wife, <laughs> the men, the leaders, held this priority and responsibility over the watch. Read us. 2 Maccabees chapter 3, verse 10. Then the high priest told him that there was such money laid up for the relief of widows and fatherless children. Read it again. Then the high priest told him that there was such money, yeah, laid, money laid up ahead. laid up for the relief of widows. Widows mean women who lost their husbands. Women who had no husbands, there was money that was left, laid up for them to take care of women who lost their husbands. Widows, because who would we rely on? They relied on their husband. Once he died, who take care of them? There was, money laid, there was money that was laid up to take care of women who were widows. Go ahead. Such money laid up for the relief of widows and fatherless children. And what? Fatherless children. And fatherless children. Which also goes into widows and orphans. So Israelite men, the men of leaders, they took care of the women and the children. There was money that was laid up for them in the treasury. We had a treasury. And the money was laid up to take care of women with our husbands and children without fathers. We were responsible. And what did Israel start doing with this money? Start to spend it. So the Lord said, okay, I'm going to have Esau make you take care of women, widows, and fatherless children. I'll create things like health insurance you got to pay for yourself. I'll create things like life insurance make you take care of yourself. I'll, I'll create things like, uh, um, what is it called? Retirement money. Or well, pensions, all that you got work for that. Pensions, all that stuff. We didn't have that back then. You were taken care of after a while. Not no more. Now you gotta do that. You gotta work 25 years, 25, 55, 35, 67. Mm -hmm. Try to raise that, raise that to 70 now. Try to raise that, you're gonna be dead. You're gonna be a damn chair, a skeleton in the chair. They'll give you a check, you'll be laying there dead somewhere. <laughs> but back then, Israel had treasury money set aside to take care of women, widows, and fatherless children. Because the men, the Israelite led, the leaders were responsible. They understood the importance of, of a child and woman being taken care of. That was no, that was that was the second thought behind that. It was nature. Now you gotta sit there and make a man be responsible for that. In no damn sense. Go to from um, Ecclesiastes 4 and verse 10. Ecclesiasticus chapter 4 and verse 10. Ecclesiasticus chapter 4, verse 10. Be as a father unto the fatherless, and instead of a husband unto their mother, so shalt thou as the son of the Most High, and he shall love thee more than thy mother doth. Read it again. Be as a father unto the fatherless. The Bible says, be as a father unto the fatherless. That goes back to those fatherless children. Be as a father unto the fatherless. Meaning if your sister may have a child, you are supposed to be a father to that woman. A father, father figure. So it's saying, go ahead. Yeah, no, no, hold on, Deacon. Yeah. yeah, they're not looking at their sister. Right. Uh, you know what I mean? Instead of looking at her, uh, 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 as her as a sister, you just trying to get an opinion. <laughs> that's, you're not trying to be the father. Right. You know what I mean? That's the Lord saying he's not getting like that. He's going to say it. Go ahead, read it. Be as a father unto the fatherless, uh -huh. and instead of a husband unto their mother. And instead of a husband, be a father. Rather than be a husband, seek to be a father first <laughs> to the children. Go ahead. So shalt thou be as the son of the Most High, and he shall love thee more than thy mother does. And the Most High will love you more than your, more than your own damn parents do. When you do that. So he wants to be more, more or less a father figure first before you try to be a, a husband. Don't be thirsty. Remember, it's a damn thirsty. Don't be like that. Your mind should be a leader first and foremost before you even strive to be a husband. Some of us in here are not ready for, you're not, some of you in here are not husband material. Some of you are not white material. You gotta grow. You gotta wait. You know, we are all a work in progress. 
Some of y'all need more work than others. And some of y'all be thirsting and lusting and you around make the wrong mistake, make the wrong decision. We, we try to stay out from. Go to Ephesians 5 again, verse 30. Ephesians. In that 29, verse 30. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 30. For we are members of this body, of his flesh and of his bones. Verse 30. For we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife. And they too should be one flesh. Does your body go one place and your arm go another place? Does your head go one place and your body and toes go another place? Your body goes where you go. So your wife supposed to go where you go. Not she stay in Virginia and you're in Ohio. Or you're in Florida and she's in Texas. Or you're in the States and she's in Jamaica. That don't make no damn sense. That ain't your flesh. That's a girlfriend. That's a lover. That's a jump off. That's not a, that's not a, that's a fling. That's not a marriage. Your spouse, when Abraham left, um, you're the Chaldees, Sarah went with him. Nowhere do you find a scripture where a man left his wife in one place, he went somewhere else. That's not biblical. It's not in there. Read again. Verse 31. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife. And they too shall be one flesh. Yeah, they twain, and Christ said twain, one flesh. Yeah. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. So, the, the secret, the mystery of marriage is that the same way you have a relationship with your wife, is the same relationship Christ had with the nation of Israel. It's the same thing, it's a parable. It's the same, it's that same responsibility Christ had. He took care of the church, he fed the church, he taught the church, he died for the church. He had responsibility for his husband, for his own family. It's the same thing. For the wife and her family, the same thing. That's the mystery. Read on. Verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself. So love his wife even as himself. Go ahead. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. That she loved her husband. Now, let's get on. Um, uh, Wisdom of Psalm 8 and 1. Regarding... um. Where the wife should be. I asked the question earlier. Does your arm go somewhere else? Wisdom of, eight, wisdom of Solomon 8 verse 1. The book of Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 1. Wisdom reaches from one end to another mightily. And sweetly does she order all things. Wisdom establishes order. It establishes order in life. It establishes order in marriages. Wisdom. Go ahead. I loved her and sought her out from my youth. The psalmist speaking. I loved wisdom and sought her out from my youth. Go ahead. I desired to make her my spouse. And I was a lover of her beauty. So he speaks of wisdom in parable form as a, as a spouse. As I desire to make wisdom my spouse or my companion. Now watch this. Jump to verse uh, 9. Watch this. Verse 9. Therefore I purposed to take her to me to no, no, live no, with no, me. Read again. Read again. Therefore I purposed to take her to me. Uh-huh. To live with me. Wisdom to do what? His spouse to do what with him? To live with me. So he says he just wisdom like a spouse. He took wisdom to do what with him? To live with me. To live with him. That's what a spouse does. A spouse lives with her husband. Go ahead. Knowing that she would be a counselor of good things and a comfort in cares and grief. Now, let's, let's, let's get an example of that. Get Sirach 36, 22. That she'll be a comfort in cares and grief. Ecclesiasticus 36, 22. The book of Sirach, chapter 36, verse 22. The beauty of a woman cheereth the countenance, and a man loveth nothing better. So when a man loves a beautiful woman. I mean, that, that's, that's a given. You want beautiful woman. Go ahead. If there be kindness, meekness, and comfort in her tongue, then is not her husband like other men? Read again. If there be kindness, meekness, and comfort in her tongue. If there be kindness, meekness, and comfort. I mean, it's earlier, comfort and cares and grief. If there be kindness, and what? Read it again from the top. If there be kindness, meekness, and kind on. Kindness goes into her not being hateful, disrespectful. Kindness, it says meekness goes into what? Meekness goes into submission. Submission, subjection. That's what kindness goes, that's what meekness, okay? 
If there be kindness, meekness, and comfort in her tongue. And comfort goes into what? The scriptures, the commandments, that's the comfort. Go ahead. Then is not her husband like other men? You're not, go ahead. So meaning that what? He's blessed because he has a he has a wife like unto himself. That's wise. Yeah, you know, we did uh we did that verse again quick. Verse 23. <coughs> if there be kindness, meekness, and comfort in her tongue, listen, I don't care how beautiful you are. If you don't have that, you are an ugly woman. That's what the scripture is trying to let you know. Yeah. You can be a you, you might not be a pretty sister, but guess what? You got that, that bring beauty out of, that can that bring beauty, a man like that. See, that sister, she's not a beautiful sister, but I, the, when you deal with that sister, you know, she deal right. That, she bring out that kindness, she bring out the, 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 the spirit, you know, she bring out the best out of you. She's encouraging. Yeah, she's very encouraged to other sisters, she's very encouraged to other sisters, you spoke to her. That bring beauty out of you. That's what the Lord wants you to know. That's that kind, that beauty, that when that you cannot explain it. That sister, for some reason, man, she very attractive because by the way she talk to you, by the way she entreats you. You understand? That's what the Bible wants you to know. You can be pretty. You don't have that thing. You ugly. Every time she open her mouth, she's spreading her mouth with stupidity. Hey, sister, be quiet for a minute. You understand? Be very mindful. Go to Ecclesiastes 40 and verse 23. We read earlier, the first thing we read was, a, it says, proof of friend. We read that earlier. Watch this. The book of Sirach chapter 40, verse 23. A friend and companion never be amiss. A friend and companion never meet at the wrong time. It's always the right time. Go ahead. But above both is a wife with her husband. But above both a friend and a companion is a wife with her husband. That's above both. A wife or a husband is above both a friend and a companion. See that? Now let's go to Hebrews. No, real quick. Go to um, Ecclesiasticus 26 and 16. I was going to leave this out. Sirach 26, verse 16. I'm going to go fast. Almost done. 26 and 16. As the sun when it ariseth in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. See the bottom part again? So is the beauty. So is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. So is the beauty of a of a good wife in the ordering of her house. So women have responsibility as well. That's why I put a responsibility on the men about providing. Women also have certain provisions themselves they must take care of. It says that so is the beauty of a woman in the ordering of her house. Read the next verse. I'm sorry, what was it? Next verse. Verse 17. 17. 17. As the clear light is upon the holy candlestick, so is the beauty of the face in ripe age. The beauty of the face in ripe age. I mean, the beauty of the face in the old age. Because y'all age together. But as you age together, there's beauty in that. And there's also beauty in her ordering the house. Go to Proverbs 31 real fast. Proverbs 31. 31 and verse... 10. This is a woman speaking to a man, a, a, a mother speaking to her son in this chapter. This is the words of a woman herself. Book of Proverbs, chapter 31, verse 10. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. It's very hard to find a virtuous woman. Very, very rare is far to find, especially in this current world we're in now. That's why you count your blessing when you find one. Keep them right, keep them well. Go ahead. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her. Yeah, read again. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her. You know what trust goes against? Prenups. You know what a prenup is? A prenup is when you say, I don't trust you in the long run, so I'll marry you, but, you know, it's in case you decide, you know, I didn't have. No, read again, please. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her. You're going to trust. That's why you make the right decision. You gain that trust. Go ahead. So that he shall have no need of spoil. No need to divide in half. Because they're going to have it together and grow old with their possessions together. Because he trusts his wife. Go ahead. She will do him good and not evil all the days of, him, of her life. Read it again. She will do him good and not evil 
all the days of her life. So we tell you how to make the right decision. It says all the days of her life. All the days of her life. Read on. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She does what? Worketh willingly with her hands. Meaning she wants to. You don't have to force her to. You don't got to beat her with a whip. Do it! Do it! She wants to do it. She wants, she desires to do it. The desire is there. Go ahead to work with her hands. Meaning she has skills. She's industrious. She seeks wool. She can sew. She seeks flax. Go ahead. She is like the merchant's ships. And she brings in the food. She brings in the, 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 the dairy and so forth. She provides things. Go ahead. She bringeth her food from afar. She goes to the store. She shops. She travels. My wife spends three days at the store. I don't understand it. Oh, she doesn't. She'll go to the store. I'm going to Costco's tomorrow. Okay, no problem. Let's come back with a bunch of groceries. I'm going to Food Bazaar tomorrow. <laughs> like, we use cake in the store. Yeah, they have a deal. It's coupon, coupon. <laughs> that half off for that bleach. And I got this one, we got to buy some game. Game's better than that. Game's better than cheer. Cheer's better than game. I'm like, okay, all right. There's, there's a card. Please leave me alone. I'm staying that stuff. Just bring it. Just bring it. It smells, it smells about good. <laughs> Whatever. I'm buying those diapers from Target because Target diapers are better than the Kmart diapers. So I don't know. Whatever, hey. Fine. Just, just buy it. Whatever. As long as you save me some money. As long as you save me money. Right. As long as money you save, I don't care. But that's, what, that's the skill. It takes the skill to do that. Go ahead. She rises also while it is yet night. They get up early in the morning, go ahead. And oh, give it, it, read them, sorry, read again. She rises also while it is yet night. At night, go ahead. And giveth meat to her household. She feeds the house, cooks it, go ahead. And a portion to her maidens. Go ahead. Go to the household is also, go ahead. She considereth a field. She considers the field. She sees the potential. Okay, we can, I, can, I can grow this there. The, the soil is good. She has skills. Go ahead. Hold on, DK. Get I done, man. Uh, uh, listen. That, uh, go back a little bit in the same verse, right? Read that verse again. You was read. Verse 15. She rises also while it is yet night. That's what I'm talking about because yeah. she just finished work hard, mm -hmm. but she's still knowing that her husband needs to be fed. Right. That's the part I want. Okay. After. You understand? You know right, some right. sisters say, I'm tired. But that sister just finished work hard. Yep. She know that. That's why that says she strength herself. Because mm -hmm. she know her husband need the meal. Mm -hmm. You understand? Our sister say, I'm tired. I clean the house all day. You come here so you don't see no food. That's, that type of sister don't complain. <laughs> she strengthen herself. Knowing that her husband coming home, he's going to need some food. Right. You see what I'm saying to you? So you all you, you understand, sisters, what I'm saying? Stop complaining. <laughs> sister like that don't complain. She already worked the field. Then she strengthened herself. She said, whoa, I got to cook for my husband. You understand? That sister like that don't complain. A virtuous sister don't complain. She do the best she can. You understand? That's what I want your sisters to see. Start complaining. Trying to make it work for you. You understand? Uh, 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 work it with more wisdom. You understand? That work, uh, if you know you got to do that much today, tomorrow, minus it. You understand? So you have time. But don't say you tired when you know that man gonna be hungry. He come home now, and what happened to the food? Then you gonna cook him some needles. Mm -hmm. I mean, hey, 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 I got some cereal. You want some cereal? <laughs> <laughs> you ain't right. Your sisters ain't right. <laughs> you understand? Noodles. Yeah, we're trying to pick the easiest thing. Chicken throw in the fire. You understand? Hey, baby, I don't worry. Give me five minutes. I get you some food. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, because that's why that your sister really that's 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 a perfect chapter because it's telling the character of a virtuous woman, what kind of woman she is. She understand her role, like we cannot understand. Women also had a job to do too. You understand? That's why we talking about these shows that is on TV. They're gonna stop you from flourish your gift because by the time you sit in front of the TV two three hours. Now you're trying to catch up the husband coming home. Now you're going to look stupid. By the time you get home, you ain't cook. Hey, what you doing all day, sis? Oh, no, you know, I cannot tell him that I was watching my favorite show. <laughs> oh, oh, I cannot tell him I was watching. Oh, what's that white boy? Uh, 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 spring, uh, uh, what's that? Jerry Spring. Yeah, Jerry Spring. Jerry spring. I cannot tell her that. <laughs> I cannot tell him that. Yeah, but you then divide your times. That's why that, uh, I think I've been watching these, these shows. They tell you that. You know, if you put your time to anything, if it's not coming back to benefit you, 
don't entertain it. It's a waste in time. You understand? Because you're watching it, it's not getting you no wisdom or no knowledge. Why you entertain something like that? Then your child is looking at something like that too. Him or her gonna be going that way. But if you see, if she see that mother is all about these laws, it's all about uh, uh, getting uh, wake up and being doing a better as a sister. The young daughter gonna learn that from you. But if you see uh, you're lazy, you're all about show up. She's gonna be just like that. She cannot be different than you. Just like the mother, so it's the daughter is the true saying. <coughs> you understand? Go ahead, D. Read um, Proverbs again. Proverbs uh, 31, even verse 16. Proverbs chapter 31, verse 16. She considereth a field and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. I mean, she has a skill. She's industrious. She knows the, knows the field. She knows the land, the soil. Go ahead. She girdeth her loins with strength. And strengthen it her heart. That's why she's able to get up at night. You know, she's tired. Get up at night and take care of the house. Yep. Even though she's worked hard all day, she, she has enough strength to get up at night and make sure the house is maintained. Go ahead. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Go ahead. Her candle goeth not out by night. She maintains her wisdom. Go ahead. She layeth her hands to the spindle. Mm -hmm. And her hands hold the distaff. That she sews. Go ahead. She stretches out her hand to the poor. She helps the body. She gives alms. Go ahead. Yea, she reaches forth her hands to the knee. Go ahead. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. My wife does all the time. My wife, I see her go out in the snow. She strap the boots on with this freaking chopping cart and go out in that snow and bring back a whole bunch of garbage. Damn. You, you can't even see outside. She'd be like, <laughs> I'm like, damn. Gee, I can't do that, man. I will be stalling here, man. You will die. In the I hate cold. You will die in the middle of the time. You will not survive. But I'm over that. I give her props, man. She doesn't. So oh, get, we need oh, again. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. For all her household are clothed with scarlet. We tear the house. Yeah, the sheets and so forth. Go ahead. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk. And purple. She dresses nice. She takes care of herself. She finds time to go out and shop and make look nice for her husband. Go ahead. After all that, go ahead. Her husband is known in the gates. A, a, man, a, good, a man is a good report, reputation. Go ahead. When he sitteth among the elders of the land. He says, it's a wise husband. Go ahead. She maketh fine linen and selleth it. She has skill. She has, she's, she has, she's business savvy. She makes, um, yeah. go ahead. And delivers girdles unto the merchant. Go ahead. Strength and honor are her clothing. And she shall rejoice in time to come. We get delivered. Go ahead. She openeth her mouth with wisdom. That's the comfort. Go ahead. And in her tongue is a law of kindness. That goes back to that comfort being on her tongue. Back in Ecclesiastes right. 36 and 26. Right. Go ahead. And 22. Go ahead. She looketh well to the ways of her household. She makes sure that house is maintained. The kids are taken care of. The kids are fed. You know how we men. You know how men do. Tell what we do. We watch the kids. The kids is another room. Hey, tell me that back there. <laughs> That's what we do. We sit back, the kids be making all kind of noise. Come in right there. Why ever we'll go back there and see what they're doing? We'll just sit there and just watch TV. That's what I do. I don't know. Just some job. You're like, what was that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Some type of stuff. <laughs> that's, what, that's, how, that's how women are. Women go, they go, are you crazy? I'm going to go see what he's doing back there. He got damn bleach. He's holding on to the bleach. <laughs> he's trying to drink it. Like, no. I don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> The women are more more responsible <laughs> in that area. But when it's my house, they're more responsible in that area. We just tell them to stop doing stuff. Go ahead. She looketh well to the ways of her household. Go ahead. And eateth not the bread of idleness. She's not sitting around doing nothing. Just laying around, doing nothing. Go ahead. Her children will rise up and call her blessed. That's why we used to kill them, get, the kids get them to say, Shalom, Mom. Most high Christ is blessed. Both bless their mother and bless their father. Go ahead. Her husband also, and he praises her. Go ahead. Many daughters have them virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Go ahead. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. Now go back to that makeup stuff. Be mindful that favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. Go ahead. It's the last, last forever. Yeah. Go ahead. Hey, hold on, Deacon. Uh, uh, the verse you just went out, you know, like a lot of times, brothers don't understand that. Like at my house, when I, I get up early to go to work. My wife, well, you would not say nothing to me. If you talk, you just talking by yourself. Unless you salute me, shalom, most high Christ bless you, I ain't saying nothing to you. Mm -hmm. You know how I see if you get up and like that, hey, hey, just start talking. You just talking, you ain't talking to me. Un un until you salute me, you ain't saying nothing to me. My son too, and my daughter, I say, hey, 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 listen, <laughs> why are you talking? <laughs> you ain't salute. My little daughter, I said, why are you talking? <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, shalom, daddy. 
they have to bless you, brother. They have to. Mm -hmm. You have to build that in a structure of your own. She ain't saying nothing if she ain't respecting you. <clears throat> Go ahead. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. That's important above all else. That yep. Fear of the Lord is above the beauty, above the favor. What's the most important thing is that she fears the Lord. Go ahead. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Let her example, let her example be shown before all. Let her have a good name. That's what it means. That's more important. Now, one more, we'll, we'll go fast now. Well, please ask us, uh, we'll go to Hebrews 13, verse 17. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 13. 13, 17. No, go to 1 Timothy 5. 1 Timothy 5 and 13. Verse 25, 13, and 14. I'm going to go to Hebrews 13 after that. Verse 25, verse 13. And with all, they learn to be idle. Let's talk about the young women. Go ahead. Wandering about from house to house. Being nosy, not knowing what to do with themselves. And not only idle, but talentless also, and busybody. Gossipers. Speaking things which they are not. Running their mouth. Go ahead. I will, therefore, that the younger women marry. <coughs> to avoid those things, get a husband. Say, not so damn idle. Go ahead. Bear children. Have kids. Guide the house. That goes back to her keeping the house maintained, ordering the house. Guide the house. Go ahead. Give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. Don't give yourself an ill name. Don't be, when people roll with you and go, you're going to do it. Right? Acting like that? <laughs> yep. Don't give, don't give people a reason to go, you full of crap. You're an Israelite. That's what it's saying. Let's go to, um, now let's go to Hebrews 13, verse 17. Now you can read that on your own. It's going to be five and down by young women. Hebrews 13. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 17. Yeah. Yeah. Obey them that have the rule over you. That's leadership. Obey them that have the rule over you. And submit yourselves. And and submit yourself. That goes into both. That goes into the body itself. So the body itself has to be submissive to the leadership. Go ahead. For they watch for your souls. Do they what? For they watch for your souls. You watch for your soul. We look, that's why we have these classes. We're watching out for you. Looking for you, watching for your souls. Go ahead. As they that must give account. As they that must be responsible. That must give account. Or are held accountable. Go ahead. That they may do it with joy. And, and, not, do with grief. Joy and not, mean not unwillingly. Go ahead. For that is unprofitable for you. Because us doing it, not only wanting to do it, is unprofitable for you. We do it because we want to, not because we made to. But because we want to. That's what the Lord wants us to do. Go to Ecclesiastes 18 and 33. So leaders, the leaders of the congregation are required to give account of their actions and do things with joy and willing and being willing. Likewise, a husband with his wife. The same exact thing. It goes to the marriage. The same exact thing. Same structure. Same order. Ecclesiastes 18 and 33. The book of Sirach, chapter 18, verse 33. Be not made a better by banqueting upon borrowing. Oh, get there, get there. Yes, sir. Please ask us 18 and 30. Really, yeah. Be not made a beggar by banqueting upon borrowing. Be not made a beggar by banqueting upon or by um, banqueting yeah. upon borrowing. Meaning, don't excessively ask this person, that person, this person, that person, this. Don't keep doing that. You beg, you ask, you, you beg, you ask, you ask all over again. He says, don't do that. Go ahead. Be not made a beggar by banqueting upon borrowing. You borrow from this person, that person. Go ahead. When thou hast nothing in thy purse. You, have, you can't pay it back. You get yourself either hurt or you'll, be, you'll gain a bad or an ill name. Reputation. That's what happened. That's what I was saying to y'all earlier. Don't do things like that. You need the help, that's fine. But don't make it a habit of asking over and over again because you're going to gain, it says, uh, you'll lie and wait for your own life, meaning brothers might hurt you, hurt you real bad. Yo, man, you bought $500 and you made my money at, man. Mm -hmm. Where's my money? <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, we don't, you're going to hurt. You're not on the damn stairs, back your neck or something. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> you get yourself hurt. And it says you'll be talked on me. People will look at you and go, yo, that guy, man, he a beggar. Don't do him. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. You know what but you cannot tell a leader will not do that, man. Like a brother in a position, knowing what the scriptures say, he's not going to react like that. That's why that we, we don't tolerate stuff like that. And we, if we find out any brother is doing that, we're going to take your wank speedily and quickly. Because we don't tolerate stuff like that. Those are like 
extortion spirit, man, like yeah. wicked spirits, man. It's called usury. You, you understand? Usury. We're not going to tolerate that. The book of Sirach, chapter 40, verse 28. Ecclesiastes 40, verse 28. V24. Yes, sir. Brethren and help are against time of trouble. So brothers and brothers are help in time of trouble. You need help financially. We're there, we are there for you for that. If you need help like that, that's fine. But don't manipulate, don't be excessive with that stuff. Don't, don't, what's the word I'm looking for? Don't abuse that. Not the white, you're going to look, look, look down upon it. be talked on. As, as You may not mean to be a, a seem like an extortioner, but it will uh, appear so. If you keep doing it like that. Jump down to verse 28. Verse 28. My son, lead not a beggar's life, for better it is to die than to beg. Don't beg. Don't run around asking about the stuff, for it's better to die than to beg. It's saying, go ahead. The life of him that depended on another man's table is not to be counted for a life. So you, you depend on somebody to feed you? It's not a life you're living. Go ahead. For he polluted himself with other men's meat. But a wise man, well nurtured, will wear their own. That's what I want. But a wise man who's well nurtured or well disciplined will be wise to not do things like that. Go ahead. Begging is sweet in the mouth of the shameless, but in his belly there shall burn a fire. Then he won't stop. You'll keep doing it again and again and again until eventually you either get your life taken from you, or you get hurt, or you get a bad name. So be mindful of that. Brothers, be very mindful of those types of things that, you, that you're doing here. Go to Ecclesiastes 25 and 22. Ecclesiastes 25 and 22. I'm going to have to Sirach chapter 25, verse 22. A woman, if she maintain her husband, is full of anger, impudence, and much reproach. Yeah, again? A woman, if she maintain her husband. That's why I spend so much time focusing on the men being the providers. If a woman has a, finds herself in a position where she's playing your role, they're going to grow to hate your guts. That's what the scriptures say. Read it again. A woman, if she maintains her husband, is full of anger. She becomes angry. Impudent. She becomes disrespectful. Talking back, smart mouth, cursing you out. Because you you're not doing anything that deserves respect at all in the house. So she becomes impudent or full of impudence, meaning disrespect. Go ahead. And much reproach. And she's embarrassed of you. She hates you. She's ashamed of you. That's what her approach is. Because, you're, because she's maintaining you. That's why I keep stressing, men, you understand? Men, you understand? Because that's what you'll have in the house. Go to Wisdom of Solomon 8 and 17. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 8, verse 17. Now, when I considered these things in myself and pondered them in my heart, how that to be allied unto wisdom is immortality. To be allied to wisdom is to gain everlasting life. Go ahead. And great pleasure it is to have her friendship. Wisdom's friendship. Go ahead. And in the works of her hands are infinite riches. Go ahead. And in the exercise of com of conference with her, prudence. I mean, you gain prudence means discretion. You know what to be discreet. You know how to how to carry yourself. When to ask. When not to ask. What to do. What not. When not to do it. Go ahead. And in talking with her, a good report. And when talking with wisdom, you gain a good report, which is the opposite of an ill name. Go ahead, a bad reputation. Go ahead. I went about seeking how to take her to me. That's all I want. Just get a um, good report. Go to First Timothy three, and verse seven. Regarding the leader, this goes to soldiers, this goes to officers, captains. This all we've all fallen to this. First Timothy uh, three. Oh, we get it. Verse 2. We got verse. I'm going to skip, skip through it. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 2. A bishop then must be blameless. Blameless. Meaning, of, go ahead. The husband of one wife. That's New Testament. One wife. Vigilant. Vigilant means serious. He's watchful. Sober. Circumstance. Watchful. Circumspect. Go ahead. Sober. Clear minded. Of good behavior. Behaves well. Good, of discretion. Give it to hospitality. Mm -hmm. Apt to teach. His mind is right. His mind is clear. He's apt to teach. He's intelligent. Go ahead. Not given to wine. Not a drunkard. Nor a striker. Not greedy or filthy lucre. But patient. Not a brawler. To argue. Not covetous. Go ahead. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity. Be serious. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? So you can't rule your own house. You can't take care of the church of God. You can't be a leader. You can't maintain your own house. Go ahead. Not a novice. 
Let's be lifted up with pride. He fall into the condemnation of the devil. Verse 7 is the final one. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without him. He must have a good report of them that are outside the body, outside in the world. You have a good report. Go ahead. Lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Next verse 8. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given too much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. Go ahead. And let these also first be proved. Stop. Let these also first be proved before they're given these positions. That's why I mentioned earlier, we must be in your lives. Because you cannot have a man leading over you who you don't know. You can't set up with people who you don't know. You gotta know you, you gotta know your family, you gotta know your kids. When other first brought us to his house, we came alone. He said, okay, now bring your wives. He was like, oh, man. Because they was demons. They were with you. Well, my wives, he was evil as hell. They get it. It was a year and a half before we fell in line. So we was worldly. We had one toe in the Bible. Well, we had one foot in the world and one toe in the Bible. That's how we were. It wasn't until I came to IUIC that the house got in order. I was a demon also. I came to say she was, I was bad too. Because a wicked man is given to a wicked woman. That's how it goes. If she's wicked, it's because you're wicked. It's not, oh, I'm good and she's bad. No, it's both ways. So and, and time, as time went on, we, um, the relationship changed and grew because we began to apply the commandments together. So together, together. That's how it works. And it wasn't just me. Other brothers had wives that was giving problems at first. Then they had to apply the commandments. It's no more issues. No more drama. You understand? That's how your brothers got to learn. They got to learn to get yourselves right. Once you get yourselves right, They'll get right. If you were home, you up in the air, Shalom, most time, Christ bless, and you at home sipping coke, she ain't taking you seriously. If, you, if you're here, Shalom, most time, Christ bless, and you smoking crack, she's not taking you seriously, man. That's not how this works. You gotta be an example within and without. In our presence and in our absence, that's how you grow. That's how the marriage gets stronger. There's less issues. But there'll always be issues. But there'll be less of them. Verse 2. And let these also first be proved. Being proven that, that, that they're worthy of that, of that position or that rank. Go ahead. Then let them use the office of a deacon. Go ahead. Being found blameless. And this again, same goes for a deacon. Go ahead. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderous, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife. One wife again. Ruling their children and their own houses well. That's all you want. So that goes back to being a good report. Now get Proverbs 15 verse 30. But then they're not. Proverbs 15 and 30, regarding a good report. Reputation. Proverbs chapter 15, verse 30. Mm -hmm. The light of the eyes rejoices the heart. Meaning wisdom rejoices the heart. Go ahead. And a good report maketh the bones fat. And a good report what? Make it the bones fat. Meaning you grow stronger. The bones get fat means your body is nourished, you get stronger spiritually. The good report makes the bones fat. How are you going to give a report? When you apply the commandments as it's written. And it shows that the bones go fatter. All right? So we'll end on that. Shalom, this is I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again... Please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.